the Sefer of Hanak, also called Enoch. Chapter 1 The word of the blessing of Hanak, how he blessed the elect and the righteous who were to exist in the time of trouble, rejecting all the unrighteous and wicked. Hanak, a righteous man, who with Elohim, answered and spoke, while his eyes were open, and he saw a holy vision in the heavens. This the angel showed me. From them I heard all things, and understood what I saw. That which will not take place in this generation, but in a generation which is to succeed at a distant period, on account of the elect. Upon their account I spoke, and conversed with him, who will go forth from his habitation, the Holy and Mighty One, the Elohim of the world, who will hereafter tread upon Mount Sinai, appear with his hosts, and be manifested in the strength of his power from heaven. All shall be afraid, and the watchers be terrified. Great fear and trembling shall seize them, even to the ends of the earth. The lofty mountains shall be troubled, and the exalted hills depressed, melting like a honeycomb in the flame. The earth shall be emerged, and all things which are in it perish. While judgment shall come upon all, even upon all the righteous, but to them shall he give peace. He shall guard the elect, and towards them exercise clemency. Then shall all belong to Elohim. Be happy and blessed, and the splendor of Elohim shall illuminate them. Chapter 2 Behold, he comes with ten thousands of his Chodeshim to execute judgment upon them, and destroy the wicked, and reprove all the carnal for everything which the sinful and wicked have done, and committed against him. Chapter 3 All who are in the heavens know what is transacted, that the heavenly luminaries change not their paths, that each rises and sets regularly, everyone at its proper period, without transgressing the commands. They behold the earth, and understand what is there transacted, from the beginning to the end of it, that every work of Elohim is invariable in the period of its appearance. They behold summer and winter, that the whole earth is full of water, and that the cloud, the dew, and the rain refresh it. Chapter 4 They consider and behold every tree, how it appears to wither, and every leaf to fall off, except of fourteen trees, which are not deciduous, which wait from the old to the appearance of the new, for two or three winters. Chapter 5 Again, they consider the days of summer, that the sun is upon it at its very beginning, while you seek for a covered and shady spot on account of the burning sun, while the earth is scorched up with fervid heat, and you become incapable of walking either upon the ground or upon the rocks in consequence of that heat. Chapter 6 They consider how the trees, when they put forth their green leaves, become covered and produce fruit, understanding everything, and knowing that he who lives forever does all these things for you, that the works at the beginning of every existing year, that all his works are subservient to him and invariable. Yet, as Elohim has appointed, so are all things brought to pass. They see, too, how the seas and the rivers together complete their respective operations. You endure not patiently, nor fulfill the commandments of Yahuwah, but you transgress and calumniate greatness, and malignant are the words in your polluted mouths against his majesty. You withered in heart, no peace shall be to you. Therefore your days shall you curse, and the years of your lives shall perish. Perpetual execration shall be multiplied, and you shall not obtain mercy. In those days shall you resign your peace with the eternal maledictions of all the righteous, and sinners shall perpetually execrate you, you with the wicked. The elect shall possess light, joy, and peace, and they shall inherit the earth. But you, you unholy, shall be accursed. Then shall wisdom be given to the elect, all of whom shall live, and not again transgress by impiety or a pride, but shall humble themselves, possessing prudence, and shall not repeat transgression. They shall not be condemned the whole period of their lives, not die in torment and indignation, 
but the sum of their days shall be completed, and they shall grow old in peace, while the years of their happiness shall be multiplied with joy and with peace forever, the whole duration of their existence. Chapter 7 It happened after the sons of men had multiplied in those days, that daughters were born to them, elegant and beautiful. And when the watchers, the sons of heaven, beheld them, they became enamored of them, saying to each other, Come, let us select for ourselves women from the progeny of men, and let us beget children. Then their leader Simyaza said to them, I fear that you may perhaps be indisposed to the performance of this enterprise, and that I alone shall suffer for so grievous a crime. But they answered him and said, We all swear, and bind ourselves by mutual execrations, that we will not change our intention, but execute our projected undertaking. Then they swore all together, and all bound themselves by mutual execrations. Their whole number was two hundred, who descended upon Ardis, which is the top of Mount Hermon. That mountain therefore was called Hermon, because they had sworn upon it, and bound themselves by mutual execrations. These are the names of their chiefs, Samyaza, who was their leader, Arakabaramayel, Akaibael, Temael, Ramuel, Danel, Azkael, Saraknael, Asael, Armors, Batraal, Anain, Zaveb, Samsavael, Urtarael, Turel, Yomiel, Erazael. These were the prefects of the two hundred angels, and the remainder were all with them. Then they took women, each choosing for himself, whom they began to approach and with whom they cohabited, teaching them sorcery, incantations, and the dividing of roots and trees. And the women conceiving brought forth giants, and they bore to them three races first, the great giants. The giants brought forth the Nephilim, and the Nephilim brought forth the Eleud. And they existed increasing in power according to their greatness, whose stature was each three hundred cubits. These devoured all the labor of men, until it became impossible to feed them, when they turned themselves against men in order to devour them, and began to injure birds, beasts, reptiles, and fishes, to eat one another's flesh, and to drink their blood. Then the earth reproved the unrighteous. Chapter 8 Moreover, Azazel taught men to make swords, knives, shields, breastplates, the fabrication of mirrors, and the workmanship of bracelets and ornaments, the use of paint, the beautifying of the eyebrows, stones of every valuable and select kind, and all sorts of dyes, so that the world became altered. Impiety increased, fornication multiplied, and they transgressed and corrupted all their ways. Amazarach taught all the sorcerers and dividers of roots, armors, the solution of sorcery, Barkael, the observers of the stars, Akaibael, signs, Timael taught astronomy, and Asaradel taught the motion of the moon, and men, being destroyed, cried out, and their voice reached to heaven. Chapter 9 Then Michael, and Gavrael, and Raphael, Surael, and Uriel looked down from heaven, and saw the quantity of blood which was shed on earth, and all the iniquity which was done upon it, and said one to another, The voice of their cries. The earth deprived has even cried to the gate of heaven. And now to you, O oh, you holy one of heaven, the souls of men complain, saying, Bring judgment to us from El Elyon. Then they said to their Adonai, the king, Adonai of Adonaim, Elohim of Elohim, King of kings, the throne of your glory is forever and ever, and forever and ever is your name sanctified and glorified. You are blessed and glorified. You have made all things. You possess power over all things, and all things are open and manifest before you. You behold all things, and nothing can be concealed from you. You have seen what Azazel has done, how he has taught every species of iniquity upon earth, 
and has disclosed to the world all the secret things which are done in the heavens. Semyaza has also taught sorcery, to whom you have given authority over those who are associated with him. They have gone together to the daughters of men, have lain with them, have become polluted, and have revealed their sins to them. The women likewise have brought forth giants. Thus has the whole earth been filled with blood and with iniquity. And now behold the souls of those who are dead cry out, and complain even to the gate of heaven. Their groaning ascends, nor can they escape from the unrighteousness which is committed on earth. You know all things before they exist. You know these things and what has been done by them. Yet, you do not speak to us. What on account of these things ought we to do to them? Chapter 10 Then El Elyon, the great and holy one, spoke and sent our Savalure to the son of Lamech, saying, Say to him in my name, Conceal yourself. Then explain to him the consummation which is about to take place, for all the earth shall perish. The waters of a deluge shall come over the whole earth, and all things which are in it shall be destroyed. And I'll teach him how he may escape, and how his seed may remain in all the earth. Again, Yahuwah said to Raphael, Bind Azazel, hand and foot, cast him into darkness, and opening the desert which is in Dudael, cast him in there. Throw upon him hurled and pointed stones, covering him with darkness. There shall he remain forever. Cover his face, that he may not see the light. And in the great day of judgment, let him be cast into the fire. Restore the earth, which the angels have corrupted, and announce life to it, that I may revive it. All the sons of men shall not perish in consequence of every secret, by which the watchers have destroyed, in which they have taught their offspring. All the earth has been corrupted by the effects of the teaching of Azazel. To him, therefore, ascribe the whole crime. To Gabriel, also Yahuwah said, Go to the bastards, the reprobates, to the children of fornication, and destroy the children of fornication, the offspring of the watchers, from among men. Bring them forth, and excite them one against another. Let them perish by mutual slaughter. For length of days shall not be theirs. They shall all entreat you, but their fathers shall not obtain their wishes respecting them. For they shall hope for eternal life, and that they may live, each of them, five hundred years. To Michael, likewise, Yahuwah said, Go and announce his crime to Semyaza and to the others who are with him, who have been associated with women, that they might be polluted with all their impurity. When all their sons shall be slain, when they shall see the perdition of their beloved, bind them for seventy generations under the earth, even to the day of judgment, and of consummation, until the judgment, the effect of which will last forever, be completed. Then shall they be taken away into the lowest depths of the fire and torments, and in confinement shall they be shut up forever. Immediately after this shall Semyaza, together with them, burn and perish. They shall be bound until the consummation of many generations. Destroy all the souls addicted to lust and the offspring of the watchers, for they have tyrannized over mankind. Let every oppressor perish from the face of the earth. Let every evil work be destroyed. The plant of righteousness and of rectitude appear, and its produce become a blessing. Righteousness and rectitude shall be forever planted with delight. And then shall all the Chodeshim give thanks, and live until they have begotten a thousand, while the whole period of their youth and their Shabbats shall be completed in peace. In those days all the earth shall be cultivated in righteousness. It shall be wholly planted with trees, and filled with benediction. Every tree of delight shall be planted in it. In it shall vines be planted, and the vine which shall be planted in it shall yield fruit to satiety. Every seed which shall be sown in it shall produce for one measure a thousand, and one measure of olives shall produce ten presses of oil. Purify the earth from all oppression, from all injustice, from all crime, from all impiety, and from all the pollution which is committed upon it. Exterminate them from the earth. Then shall all the children of men be righteous, and all nations 
shall pay me divine honors and bless me, and all shall adore me. The earth shall be cleansed from all corruption, from every crime, from all punishment, and from all suffering. Neither will I again send a deluge upon it from generation to generation forever. In those days I will open the treasures of blessing which are in heaven, that I may cause them to descend upon earth, and upon all the works and labor of man. Peace and equity shall associate with the sons of men all the days of the world, in every generation of it. Chapter 12 Before all these things, Hanok was concealed. Nor did any one of the sons of men know where he was concealed, where he had been, and what had happened. He was wholly engaged with the holy ones and with the watchers in his days. I, Hanok, was blessing the great Yahuwah and king of peace, and behold, the watchers called me Hanok the scribe. Then Yahuwah said to me, Hanak, scribe of righteousness, go tell the watchers of heaven, who have deserted the lofty sky and their holy everlasting station, who have been polluted with women, and have done as the sons of men do, by taking to themselves women, and who have been greatly corrupted on the earth, that on the earth they shall never obtain peace and remission of sin, for they shall not rejoice in their offspring, they shall behold the slaughter of their beloved shall lament for the destruction of their sons, and shall petition forever, but shall not obtain mercy and peace. Chapter 13 Then Hanak passing on said to Azazel, You shall not obtain peace. A great sentence is gone forth against you. He shall bind you. Neither shall relief, mercy, and supplication be yours on account of the oppression which you have taught, and on account of every act of blasphemy tyranny, and sin, which you have discovered to the children of men. Then departing from him, I spoke to them all together, and they all became terrified and trembled, beseeching me to write for them a memorial of supplication, that they might obtain forgiveness, and that I might make the memorial of their prayer ascend up before the Elohim of heaven, because they could not themselves thenceforward address him, nor raise up their eyes to heaven on account of the disgraceful offense for which they were judged. Then I wrote a memorial of their prayer and supplications, for their ruacho, for everything which they had done, and for the subject of their entreaty, that they might obtain remission and rest. Proceeding on, I continued over the waters of Dan, which is on the right to the west of Hermon, reading the memorial of their prayer, until I fell asleep. And behold, a dream came to me, and visions appeared above me. I fell down and saw a vision of punishment, that I might relate it to the sons of heaven and reprove them. When I awoke, I went to them. All being collected together, stood weeping in Ubesael, which is situated between Libanos and Senesir, with their faces veiled. I related in their presence all the visions which I had seen, and my dream, and began to utter these words of righteousness, reproving the watchers of heaven. Chapter 14 this is the sephir of the words of righteousness and of reproof of the watchers, who are from eternity, according to that which he, who was holy and great, commanded in the vision. I perceived in my dream that I was now speaking with a tongue of flesh, and with my breath, which El Elohim has put into the mouth of men, that they might converse with it, and understand with the heart, as he has created and given to men the power of comprehending the word of understanding. So has he created and given to me the power of reproving the watchers, the offspring of heaven. I have written your petition, and in my vision it has been shown me that what you request will not be granted you as long as the world endures. Judgment has been passed upon you. Your request will not be granted you. From this time forward, never shall you ascend into heaven. He has said that on the earth he will bind you as long as the world endures. But before these things, you shall behold the destruction of your beloved ones. You shall not possess them, but they shall fall before you by the sword. Neither shall you entreat for them and for yourselves, but you shall weep and supplicate in silence the words of the sephir which I wrote. A vision thus appeared to me. Behold, in that vision clouds and mist invited me. Agitated stars and flashes of lightning impelled and pressed me forwards while winds in the vision assisted my flight, accelerating my progress. They elevated me aloft to heaven. 
I proceeded until I arrived at a wall built with stones of crystal. A tongue of fire surrounded it, which began to strike me with terror. Into this vibrating flame I entered, and drew nigh to a spacious habitation built also with stones of crystal. Its walls too, as well as pavement, were formed with stones of crystal, and crystal likewise was the ground. Its roof had the appearance of agitated stars and flashes of lightning, and among them were cherubim of fire, and their heaven was water. A flame burned around its walls, and its portal blazed with fire. When I entered into this dwelling, it was hot as fire and cold as ice. No trace of delight or life was there. Terror overwhelmed me, and a fearful shaking seized me. Violently agitated and trembling, I fell upon my face. In the vision I looked, and behold there was another habitation more spacious, every entrance to which was open before me, erected in a vibrating flame. So greatly did it excel in all points, in glory, in magnificence, and in magnitude, that it is impossible to describe to you either the splendor or the extent of it. Its floor was on fire. Above were lightnings and agitated stars, while its roof exhibited a blazing fire. Attentively, I surveyed it and saw that it contained an exalted throne, the appearance of which was like that of frost, while its circumference resembled the orb of the brilliant sun. And there was the voice of the Cherubim. From underneath this mighty throne, rivers of flaming fire issued. To look upon it was impossible. One great in glory sat upon it, whose robe was brighter than the sun and whiter than snow. No angel was capable of penetrating to view the face of him, the glorious and the effulgent, nor could any mortal behold him. A fire was flaming around him. A fire also of great extent continued to rise up before him, so that not one of those who surrounded him was capable of approaching him, among the myriads of myriads who were before him. To him holy consultation was needless. Yet did not the sanctified who were near him depart far from him, either by night or by day, nor were they removed from him. I also was so far advanced, with a veil on my face, and trembling. Then Yahuwah with his own mouth called me, saying, Approach hither, Chenach, at my holy word. And he raised me up, making me draw nearer even to the entrance. My eye was directed to the ground. Chapter 15 Then addressing me, he spoke and said, Hear, neither be afraid, O righteous Chenach, you scribe of righteousness. Approach hither and hear my voice. Go say to the watchers of heaven, who have sent you to pray for them, you ought to pray for men, and not men for you. Wherefore have you forsaken the lofty and holy heaven, which endures forever, and have lain with women, have defiled yourselves with the daughters of men, have taken to yourselves women, have acted like the sons of the earth, and have begotten giants? You being spiritual, holy, and possessing a life which is eternal, have polluted yourselves with women, have begotten in carnal blood, have lusted in the blood of men, and have done as those who are flesh and blood do. These, however, die and perish. Therefore have I given to them women, that they might cohabit with them, that sons might be born of them, and that this might be transacted upon earth. But you, from the beginning, were made spiritual, possessing a life which is eternal, and not subject to death forever. Therefore I made not women for you, because, being spiritual, your dwelling is in heaven. Now the giants who have been born of the Ruach and of flesh shall be called upon earth evil Ruacho, and on earth shall be their habitation. Evil Ruacho shall proceed from their flesh, because they were created from above, from the holy waters was their beginning and primary foundation. Evil Ruacho shall they be upon the earth, and the Ruacho of the wicked shall they be called. The habitation of the Ruacho of heaven shall be in heaven, but upon earth shall be the habitation of terrestrial Ruacho, who are born on earth. The Ruacho of giants are like Nephilim, which shall oppress, corrupt, fall, content, and bruise upon earth. They shall cause lamentation. No food shall they eat, and they shall be thirsty. They shall be concealed, and shall rise up against the sons of men, and against women, 
for they come forth during the days of slaughter and destruction. Chapter 16 And as to the death of the giants, wheresoever their ruach will depart from their bodies, let their flesh, that which is perishable, be destroyed before the judgment. Thus shall they perish, until the day of the great consummation of the great world. A destruction shall take place of the watchers and the impious. And now to the watchers, who have sent you to pray for them, who in the beginning were in heaven, say, In heaven have you been. Secret things, however, have not been manifested to you, yet have you known a reprobated mystery. And this you have related to women in the hardness of your heart, and by that mystery have women and mankind multiplied evils upon the earth. Say to them, Never therefore shall you obtain peace. Chapter 17 They raised me up into a certain place, where they, the angels, were like the appearance of a burning fire, and when they pleased, they assumed the likeness of men. They carried me to a lofty spot, to a mountain, the top of which reaches to heaven. And I beheld the receptacles of light and of thunder at the extremities of the place, where it was deepest. There was a bow of fire, and arrows in their quiver, a sword of fire, and every species of lightning. Then they elevated me to a babbling stream, and to a fire in the west, which received all the setting of the sun. I came to a river of fire, which flowed like water, and emptied itself into the great sea westwards. I saw every large river, until I arrived at the great darkness. I went to where all the flesh migrate, and I beheld the mountains of the gloom which constitutes winter, and the place from which issues the water in every abyss. I saw also the mouths of all the rivers in the world, and the mouths of the deep. Chapter 18 I then surveyed the receptacles of all the winds, perceiving that they contributed to adorn the whole creation and to guard the foundation of the earth. I surveyed the stone which supports the corners of the earth. I also beheld the four winds which bear up the earth and the firmament of heaven. And I beheld the winds occupying the exalted sky, arising in the midst of heaven and of earth and constituting the pillars of heaven. I saw the winds which turned the sky, which caused the orb of the sun and of all the stars to set. And over the earth I saw the winds which support the clouds. I saw the path of the angels. I perceived at the extremity of the earth the firmament of heaven above it. Then I passed on towards the south, where, burnt both by day and night, six mountains formed of glorious stones, three towards the east and three towards the south. Those which were towards the east were of a variegated stone, one of which was of marguerite and another of antimony. Those towards the south were of a red stone. The middle one reached to heaven like the throne of Elohim, a throne composed of alabaster, the top of which was of sapphire. I saw, too, a blazing fire hanging over all the mountains. And there I saw a place on the other side of an extended territory, where waters were collected. I likewise beheld terrestrial fountains deep in the fiery columns of heaven, and in the columns of heaven I beheld fires, which descended without number, but neither on high, nor into the deep. Over these fountains I also perceived the place, which had neither the firmament of heaven above it, nor the solid ground underneath it, neither was there water above it, nor anything on wing, but the spot was desolate. And there I beheld seven stars, like great blazing mountains, and like Ruacho entreating me. Then the angel said, This place, until the consummation of heaven and earth, will be the prison of the stars and the host of heaven. The stars which roll over fire are those which transgressed the commandment of Elohim before their time arrived for they came not in their proper season. Therefore was he offended with them, and bound them, until the period of the consummation of their crimes in the secret ear. Chapter 19 Then Uriel said, Here the angels, who cohabited with women, appointed their leaders, and assuming many forms made men profane and caused them to err, so that they sacrificed to devils as to Elohim. For in the great day of judgment, with which they shall be judged, until they are consumed, and their women also shall be judged, who led astray the angels of heaven, that they might salute them. And I, Hanak, 
I alone saw the likeness of the end of all things, nor did any man see it as I saw it. Chapter 20 These are the names of the angels who watch. Uriel, one of the holy angels who is over clamor and terror. Raphael, one of the holy angels who is over the ruachot of men. Raguel, one of the holy angels who inflicts punishment on the world and on the luminaries. Michael, one of the holy angels who is over mankind virtue, commands the nations. Sarakael, one of the holy angels who is over the ruach of children of men that transgress. Gavrael, one of the holy angels who is over the serpents, over paradise, and over the cherubim. Chapter 21 Then I made a circuit to a place in which nothing was completed, and there I beheld neither the tremendous workmanship of an exalted heaven, nor of an established earth, but a desolate spot, prepared and terrific. There, too, I beheld seven stars of heaven bound in it together, like great mountains and like a blazing fire. I exclaimed, For what species of crime have they been bound, and why have they been removed to this place? Then Uriel, one of the holy angels who was with me, and who conducted me, answered, Hanak, wherefore do you ask? Wherefore do you reason with yourself, and anxiously inquire? These are those of the stars which have transgressed the commandment of El Elyon, and are here bound, until the infinite number of the days of their crimes be completed. From there I afterwards passed on to another terrific place, where I beheld the operation of a great fire blazing and glittering, in the midst of which there was a division. Columns of fire struggled together to the end of the abyss, and deep was their descent. But neither its measurement nor magnitude was I able to discover. Neither could I perceive its origin. Then I exclaimed, How terrible is this place, and how difficult to explore! Uriel, one of the holy angels who was with me, answered and said, Hanak, why are you alarmed and amazed at this terrific place, at the sight of this suffering? This, he said, is the prison of the angels, and here they are kept forever. Chapter 22 From there I proceeded to another spot, where I saw on the west a great and lofty mountain, a strong rock, and four delightful places. Internally it was deep, capacious, and very smooth, as smooth as if it had been rolled over. It was both dark and deep to behold. Then Raphael, one of the holy angels who were with me, answered and said, these are the delightful places where the ruacho, the souls of the dead, will be collected. For them were they formed. And here will be collected all the souls of the sons of men. These places in which they dwell shall they occupy until the day of judgment and until their appointed period. Their appointed period will be long, even until the great judgment. And I saw the ruacho of the sons of men who were dead, and their voices reached to heaven, while they were accusing. Then I inquired of Raphael, an angel who was with me, and said, Whose ruach is that, the voice of which reaches to heaven and accuses? He answered, saying, This is the ruach of Hebel, who was slain by Cain his brother, and who will accuse that brother, until his seed be destroyed from the face of the earth, until his seed perish from the seed of mankind. At that time, therefore, I inquired respecting him, and respecting the general judgment, saying, Why is one separated from another? He answered, Three separations have been made between the ruacho of the dead, and thus have the ruacho of the righteous been separated, namely, by a chasm, by water, and by light above it. And in the same way likewise are sinners separated when they die, and are buried in the earth, judgment not overtaking them in their lifetime. Here their souls are separated. Moreover, abundant is their suffering until the time of the great judgment, the castigation and the torment of those who eternally execrate, whose souls are punished and bound there forever. And thus has it been from the beginning of the world. Thus has there existed a separation between the souls of those who utter complaints and of those who watch for their destruction, to slaughter them in the day of sinners. A receptacle of this sort has been formed for the souls of unrighteous men and of sinners and of those who have completed crime, and associated with the impious, whom they resemble. Their souls shall not be annihilated in the day of judgment, 
neither shall they arise from this place. Then I blessed Elohim, and said, Blessed be my Adonai, Yehuah of glory and of righteousness, who reigns over all forever and ever. Chapter 23 From there I went to another place, towards the west, unto the extremities of the earth, where I beheld a fire blazing and running along without cessation, which is intermitted, its course neither by day nor by night, but continued always the same. I inquired, saying, What is this which never ceases? Then Raguel, one of the holy angels who were with me, answered and said, This blazing fire which you behold running towards the west is all the luminaries of heaven. Chapter 24 I went from there to another place and saw a mountain of fire flashing both by day and night. I proceeded towards it. I perceived seven splendid mountains which were all different from each other. Their stones were brilliant and beautiful. All were brilliant and splendid to behold, and beautiful was their surface. Three were towards the east, and strengthened by being placed one upon another, and three were towards the south, strengthened in a similar manner. There were likewise deep valleys which did not approach each other, and the seventh mountain was in the midst of them. In length they all resembled the seat of a throne, and odoriferous trees surrounded them. Among these there was a tree of an unceasing smell, nor of those which were in Eden was there one of all the fragrant trees which smelt like this. Its leaf, its flower, and its bark never withered, and its fruit was beautiful. Its fruit resembled the cluster of the palm. I exclaimed, Behold, this tree is goodly in its aspect, pleasing in its leaf, and the sight of its fruit is delightful to the eye. Then Michael, one of the holy and glorious angels who were with me, and who presided over them, answered, and said, Hanak, why do you inquire respecting the odor of this tree? Are you inquisitive to know it? Then I, Hanak, replied to him, and said, Concerning everything I am desirous of instruction, but particularly concerning this tree. He answered me, saying, That mountain which you behold, the extent of whose head resembles the seat of Yahuwah, will be the seat on which shall sit the holy and great Yahuwah of glory, the everlasting king, when he shall come and descend to visit the earth with goodness. And that tree of an agreeable smell, not one of carnal odor, there shall be no power to touch until the period of the great judgment. When all shall be punished and consumed forever, this shall be bestowed on the righteous and humble. The fruit of the tree shall be given to the elect." For towards the north life shall be planted in the holy place, towards the habitation of the everlasting king. Then shall they greatly rejoice and exult in the holy one. The sweet odor shall enter into their bones, and they shall live a long life on the earth, as your forefathers have lived. Neither in their days shall sorrow, distress, trouble, and punishment afflict them. And I blessed Yahuwah of glory, the everlasting king, because he has prepared this tree for the Kodashim, formed it, and declared that he would give it to them. Chapter 25 From there I proceeded to the middle of the earth, and beheld a happy and fertile spot, which contained branches continually sprouting from the trees which were planted in it. There I saw a holy mountain, and underneath it water on the eastern side, which flowed towards the south. I saw also on the east another mountain as high as that, and between them there were deep, but not wide, valleys. Water ran towards the mountain to the west of this, and underneath there was likewise another mountain. There was a valley, but not a wide one, below it, and in the midst of them were other deep and dry valleys towards the extremity of the three. All these valleys, which were deep, but not wide, consisted of a strong rock, with a tree which was planted in them. And I wondered at the rock and at the valleys, being extremely surprised. Chapter 26 Then I said, What means this blessed land, all these lofty trees, and the accursed valley between them? Then Uriel, one of the holy angels who were with me, replied, This valley is the accursed of the accursed forever. Here shall be collected all who utter with their mouths unbecoming language against Elohim, and speak harsh things of his glory. Here shall they be collected. Here shall be their territory. In the latter days an example of judgment shall be made of them in righteousness before the Chodeshim, 
while those who have received mercy shall forever, all their days, bless Elohim, the everlasting King. And at the period of judgment shall they bless him for his mercy, as he has distributed to them. Then I blessed Elohim, addressing myself to him, and making mention, as was meet, of his greatness. Chapter 27 from there I proceeded towards the east to the middle of the mountain in the desert, the level surface only of which I perceived. It was full of trees of the seed alluded to, and water leapt down upon it. There appeared a cataract, composed of many cataracts both towards the west and towards the east. Upon one side were trees, upon the other water and dew. Chapter 28 Then I went to another place from the desert towards the east of that mountain, which I had approached. There I beheld trees of judgment, particularly the sweet-smelling opiate, frankincense, and myrrh, and trees unlike to each other. And over it, above them, was the elevation of the eastern mountain at no great distance. Chapter 29 I likewise saw another place with valleys of water, which never wasted, where I perceived a goodly tree, which in smell resembled the mastic tree. And towards the sides of these valleys, I perceived cinnamon of a sweet odor. Over them, I advanced towards the east. Chapter 30 Then I beheld another mountain containing trees, from which water flowed like Necatro. Its name was Serera and Kelboneba. And upon this mountain I beheld another mountain, upon which were trees of Alva. These trees were full, like almond trees, and strong. And when they produced fruit, it was superior to all redolence. Chapter 31 After these things, surveying the entrances of the north above the mountains, I perceived seven mountains replete with pure nard, odoriferous trees, cinnamon, and papyrus. From there I passed on above the summits of those mountains to some distance eastwards, and went over the Erythrian Sea. And when I was advanced far beyond it, I passed along above the angel Zatael, and arrived at the Garden of Righteousness. In this garden I beheld, among other trees, some which were numerous and large, and which flourished there. Their fragrance was agreeable and powerful, and their appearance both varied and elegant. The tree of knowledge also was there, of which if anyone eats, he becomes endowed with great wisdom. It was like a species of the tamarind tree bearing fruit which resembles grapes extremely fine, and its fragrance extended to a considerable distance. I exclaimed, How beautiful is this tree, and how delightful is its appearance! Then holy Raphael, an angel who was with me, answered and said, This is the tree of knowledge, of which your ancient father and your aged mother ate, who were before you, and who, obtaining knowledge, their eyes being opened, and knowing themselves to be naked, were expelled from the garden. Chapter 32 From there I went on towards the extremities of the earth, where I saw large beasts different from each other, and birds various in their countenances and forms, as well as with notes of different sounds. To the east of these beasts, I perceived the extremities of the earth, where heaven seized. The gates of heaven stood open, and I beheld the celestial stars come forth. I numbered them as they proceeded out of the gate, and wrote them all down, as they came out one by one according to their number. I wrote down their names altogether, their times and their seasons, as the angel Uriel, who was with me, pointed them out to me. He showed them all to me, and wrote them down. He also wrote down for me their names, their regulations, and their operations. Chapter 33 From there I advanced on towards the north, to the extremities of the earth, and there I saw a great and glorious wonder at the extremities of the whole earth. I saw their heavenly gates opening into heaven, three of them distinctly separated. The northern winds proceeded from them, blowing cold, hail, frost, snow, dew, and rain. From one of the gates they blew mildly, but when they blew from the two, it was with violence and force. They blew over the earth strongly. Chapter 34 from there I went to the extremities of the world westwards, where I perceived three gates open, as I had seen in the north, 
the gates and passages through them being of equal magnitude. Chapter 35 Then I proceeded to the extremities of the earth southwards, where I saw three gates open to the south, from which issued dew, rain, and wind. From there I went to the extremities of heaven eastwards, where I saw three heavenly gates open to the east, which had smaller gates within them. Through each of these small gates the stars of heaven passed on, and proceeded towards the west by a path which was seen by them, and at every period. When I beheld, I blessed. Every time, I blessed Yehu of glory, who had made those great and splendid signs, that they might display the magnificence of this works to angels and to the souls of men, and that these might glorify all his works and operations, might see the effect of his power, might glorify the great labor of his hands, and bless him forever. Chapter 37 The vision which he saw, the second vision of wisdom, which Hanak saw, the son of Yered, the son of Mahalalel, the son of Canaan, the son of Enosh, the son of Seth, the son of Adam. This is the commencement of the word of wisdom, which I received to declare and tell to those who dwell upon earth. Hear from the beginning, and understand to the end, the holy things which I utter in the presence of Yahuwah Tzavahut, those who were before thought it good to speak. And let not us who come after obstruct the beginning of wisdom. Until the present period, never has there been given before Yahuwah Tzavahot that which I have received, wisdom according the capacity of my intellect, and according to the pleasure of Yahuwah Tzavahot, that which I have received from him, a portion of life eternal. And I obtained three parables which I declared to the inhabitants of the world. Chapter 38 Parable the First When the assembly of the righteous shall be manifested, and sinners be judged for their crimes, and be troubled in the sight of the world, when the righteous one appears in the presence of the righteous themselves, who will be elected for their works weighed by Yahuwah Sabaot, and when the light of the righteous and the elect, who dwell on the earth, shall be manifested, where will the habitation of sinners be? And where the place of rest for those who have rejected Yahuwah Sabaot? It would have been better for them had they never been born. When, too, the secrets of the righteous shall be revealed, then shall sinners be judged, and impious men shall be afflicted in the presence of the righteous and the elect. From that period those who possess the earth shall cease to be powerful and exalted. Neither shall they be capable of beholding the countenances of the holy, for the light of Yahuwah Sabaot will have appeared on the face of the holy, the righteous, and the chosen. Yet shall not the mighty kings of that period be destroyed, but be delivered into the hands of the righteous and the holy. Nor thenceforward shall any obtain commiseration from Yahuwah Sabaot, because their lives will have been completed. Chapter 39 In those days shall the elect and holy race descend from the upper heavens, and their seed shall then be with the sons of men. Hanak received Sepharim of indignation and wrath, and Sepharim of hurry and agitation. Never shall they obtain mercy, says Yahuwah Sabaot. A cloud then snatched me up, and the wind raised me up above the surface of the earth, placing me at the extremity of the heavens. There I saw another vision. I saw the habitations and resting places of the Chodeshim. There my eyes beheld their habitations with the angels, and their resting places with the holy ones. They were entreating, supplicating, and praying for the sons of men, while righteousness like water flowed before them, and mercy like dew over the earth, and thus with them forever and ever. At that time my eyes beheld the dwelling of the elect, of truth, faith, and righteousness. Countless shall be the number of the holy and the elect, and the presence of Elohim forever and ever. The residence I beheld under the wings of Yahuwah Sabaot, all the holy and the elect sung before him, in appearance like a blaze of fire, their mouths being full of blessings, and their lips glorifying the name of Yahuwah Sabaot. And righteousness was incessantly before him. There was I desirous of remaining, and my soul longed for that habitation. There was my antecedent inheritance, for thus had I prevailed before Yahuwah Sabaot. At that time I glorified and extolled the name of Yahuwah Sabaot with blessing, and with praise, for he has established it with blessing and with praise, 
according to his own good pleasure. That place long did my eyes contemplate. I blessed and said, Blessed be he, blessed from the beginning forever. In the beginning, before the world was created, and without end is his knowledge. What is this world? Of every existing generation, those shall bless you who do not sleep, but stand before your glory, blessing, glorifying, exalting you, and saying, The holy, holy, holy Yahuwah Tzau'ot fills the whole world of the Ruachot. There my eyes beheld all, who, without sleeping, stand before him and bless him, saying, Blessed be you, and blessed be the name of Elohim forever and ever. Then my countenance became changed, until I was incapable of seeing. Chapter 40 After this I beheld thousands of thousands, and myriads of myriads, and an infinite number of people standing before Yahuwah Tzavahot, on the four wings likewise of Yahuwah Tzavahot, on the four sides, I perceived others besides those who were standing. Their names, too, I know, because the angel who proceeded with me declared them to me, discovering to me every secret thing. Then I heard the voices of those upon the four sides magnifying Yahuwah of glory. The first voice blessed Yahuwah Tzavo forever and ever. The second voice I heard blessing the elect one, and the elect who suffer on account of Yahuwah Tzavo. The third voice I heard petitioning and praying for those who dwell upon earth, and supplicate the name of Yahuwah Tzavo. The fourth voice I heard expelling the impious angels and prohibiting them from entering into the presence of Yahuwah Tzavo to accuse the inhabitants of the earth. After this, I besought the angel of peace who proceeded with me to explain all that was concealed. I said to him, Who are those I have seen on the four sides, and whose words I have heard and written down? He replied, The first is the merciful, the patient, the holy Michael. The second is he who is over every suffering and every affliction of the sons of men, the holy Raphael. The third, who is over all that is powerful, is Gavriel. And the fourth, who is over repentance, and the hope of those who will inherit eternal life, is Phanuel. These are the four angels of El Elyon, and their four voices, which at that time I heard. Chapter 41 After this I beheld the secrets of the heavens, and of paradise, according to its divisions, and of the action of mankind as they waited there in balances. I saw the habitations of the elect, and the habitations of the holy. And there my eyes beheld all the sinners who denied Yahuwah of glory, and whom they were expelling from there, and dragging away, as they stood there, no punishment proceeding against them from Yahuwah Sabaoth. There, too, my eyes beheld the secrets of the lightning and the thunder, and the secrets of the winds, how they were distributed as they blow over the earth the secrets of the winds, of the dew, and of the clouds. There I perceived the place from which they issued forth, and became saturated with the dust of the earth. There I saw the wooden receptacles, out of which the winds became separated, the receptacle of hail, the receptacle of snow, the receptacle of the clouds, and the cloud itself, which continued over the earth before the world. I beheld also the receptacles of the moon, once they came, whether they proceeded, their glorious return, and how one became more splendid than another. I marked their rich progress, their unchangeable progress, their disunited and undiminished progress, their observance of a mutual fidelity by a stable oath. The sun goes out first and completes its journey, in obedience to the command of Yahuwah Savot. Potent is his name forever and ever. After this, the path that both concealed and manifested the moon, as well as the progress of its path, was there completed by day and by night, while each, one with another, looked towards Yahuwah Sabaoth, magnifying and praising without cessation, since praise to them is rest. For in the splendid sun there is a frequent conversion to blessing and to malediction. The course of the moon's path to the righteous is light, but to sinners it is darkness. In the name of Yahuwah Tzavot, who created division between light and darkness, and separated the Ruachot of men, strengthened the Ruachot of the righteous in the name of his own righteousness. Nor does the angel prevent this, neither is he endowed with the power of preventing it, for the judge beholds them all, 
and judges them all in his own presence. Chapter 42 Wisdom found not a place where she could inhabit. Her dwelling, therefore, is in heaven. Wisdom went forth to dwell among the sons of men, but she obtained not a habitation. Wisdom returned to her place and seated herself in the midst of the angels. But iniquity went forth after her return, who unwillingly found a habitation and resided among them, as rain in the desert and as a dew in a thirsty land. Chapter 43 I beheld another splendor and the stars of heaven. I observed that he called them all by their respective names and that they heard. In a righteous balance I saw that he weighed out with their light the amplitude of their places in the day of their appearance and their conversion. Splendor produced splendor, and their conversion was into the number of the angels and of the faithful. Then I inquired of the angel who proceeded with me and explained to me the secret things, what their names were. He answered, A similitude of those has Yahuwah Sabaoth shown you. They are names of the righteous who dwell upon earth, and who believe in the name of Yahuwah Sabaoth forever and ever. Chapter 44 Another thing also I saw respecting splendor, that it rises out of the stars and becomes splendor, being incapable of forsaking them. Chapter 45 Parable the second, respecting these who deny the name of the habitation of the holy ones and of Yahuwah Sabaoth. Heaven they shall not ascend, nor shall they come on the earth. This shall be the portion of sinners who deny the name of Yahuwah Sabaoth and who are thus reserved for the day of punishment and of affliction. In that day shall the elect one sit upon a throne of glory and shall choose their conditions and countless habitations while the Ruachot within them shall be strengthened, when they behold my elect one, for those who have fled for protection to my holy and glorious name. In that day I will cause my elect one to dwell in the midst of them, will change heaven, will bless it, and illuminate it forever. I will also change the earth, will bless it, and cause those whom I have elected to dwell upon it. But those who have committed sin and iniquity shall not inhabit it, for I have marked their proceedings. My righteous ones will I satisfy with peace, placing them before me, but the condemnation of sinners shall draw near, that I may destroy them from the face of the earth. Chapter 46 There I beheld the Ancient of Days, whose head was like white wool, and with him another, whose countenance resembled that of man. His countenance was full of grace, like one of the holy angels. Then I inquired of one of the angels, who went with me, and who showed me every secret thing concerning this son of Adam, who he was, whence he was, and why he accompanied the Ancient of Days. He answered and said to me, This is the son of Adam, to whom righteousness belongs, with whom righteousness is dwelt, and who will reveal all the treasures of that which is concealed. For Yahuwah Sabaoth has chosen him and his portion has surpassed all before Yahuwah Sabaoth in everlasting uprightness. This son of Adam, whom you behold, shall raise up kings and the mighty from their dwelling places, and the powerful from their thrones, shall loosen the bridles of the powerful, and break in pieces the teeth of sinners. He shall hurl kings from their thrones and their dominions, because they will not exalt and praise him, nor humble themselves before him, by whom their kingdoms were granted to them. The countenance likewise of the mighty shall he cast down, filling them with confusion. Darkness shall be their habitation, and worms shall be their bed. Nor from that their bed shall they hope to be again raised, because they exalted not the name of Yahuwah Sabaoth. They shall condemn the stars of heaven, shall lift up their hands against El Elyon, shall tread upon and inhabit the earth, exhibiting all their acts of iniquity, even their works of iniquity. Their strength shall be in their riches and their faith in the Elohim whom they have formed with their own hands. They shall deny the name of Yahuwah Sabaoth and will be driven from the houses of his assembly and of the faithful who suffer in the name of Yahuwah Sabaoth. Chapter 47 In that day the prayer of the holy and the righteous and the blood of the righteous shall ascend from the earth into the presence of Yahuwah Sabaoth. 
In that day shall the holy ones assemble, who dwell above the heavens, and with united voice petition, supplicate, praise, laud, and bless the name of Yahuwah Sabaoth, on account of the blood of the righteous which has been shed, that the prayer of the righteous may not be intermitted before Yahuwah Sabaoth, that for them he would execute judgment, and that his patience may not endure forever. At that time I beheld the Ancient of Days, while he sat upon the throne of his glory. The sephir of the living was opened in his presence, and all the powers which were above the heavens stood around and before him. Then were the hearts of the Kodashim full of joy, because the consummation of righteousness was arrived, the supplication of the Kodashim heard, and the blood of the righteous appreciated by Yahuwah Sabaoth. Chapter 48 in that place I beheld a fountain of righteousness which never failed, encircled by many springs of wisdom. Of these all the thirsty drank, and were filled with wisdom, having their habitation with the righteous, the elect, and the holy. In that hour was this son of Adam invoked before Yahuwah Sabaoth, and his name in the presence of the Ancient of Days. Before the sun and the signs were created, before the stars of heaven were formed, his name was invoked in the presence of Yahuwah Sabaoth. A support shall he be, and he shall be the light of nations. He shall be the hope of those whose hearts are troubled. All who dwell on earth shall fall down and worship before him, shall bless and glorify him, and sing praises to the name of Yahuwah Sabaoth. Therefore the elect and the concealed one existed in his presence before the world was created and forever. In his presence he existed, and has revealed to the Chodeshim and to the righteous the wisdom of Yahuwah Sabaoth. For he has preserved the lot of the righteous, because they have hated and rejected this world of iniquity, and have detested all its works and ways in the name of Yahuwah Sabaoth. For in his name shall they be preserved, and his will shall be their life. In those days shall the kings of the earth and the mighty men who have gained the world by their achievements become humble in countenance. For in the day of their anxiety and trouble, their souls shall not be saved, and they shall be in the subjection to those whom I have chosen. I will cast them like hay into the fire, and like lead into the water. Thus shall they burn in the presence of the righteous, and sink in the presence of the holy. Nor shall a tenth part of them be found. But in the day of their trouble, the world shall obtain tranquility. In his presence shall they fall, and not be raised up again nor shall there be anyone to take them out of his hands, and to lift them up. For they have denied Yahuwah Sabaoth and his Mashiach. The name of Yahuwah Sabaoth shall be blessed. Wisdom is poured forth like water, and glory fails not before him forever and ever, for potent is he in all the secrets of righteousness. But iniquity passes away like a shadow, and possesses not a fixed station. For the elect one stands before Yahuwah Sabaoth, and his glory is forever and ever, and his power from generation to generation. With him dwells the Ruach of intellectual wisdom, the Ruach of instruction and of power, and the Ruach of those who sleep in righteousness. He shall judge secret things, nor shall any be able to utter a single word before him, for the elect one is in the presence of Yahuwah Sabaoth, according to his own pleasure. Chapter 49 in those days, the Chodeshim and the Chosen shall undergo a change. The light of day shall rest upon them, and the splendor and glory of the Chodeshim shall be changed. In the day of trouble, evil shall be heaped up upon sinners, but the righteous shall triumph in the name of Yahuwah Sabaoth. Others shall be made to see that they must repent and forsake the works of their hands, and that glory awaits them not in the presence of Yahuwah Sabaoth yet that by his name they may be saved. Yahuwah Sabo will have compassion on them, for great is his mercy, and righteousness is in his judgment, and in the presence of his glory. Nor in his judgment shall iniquity stand. He who repents not before him shall perish. Henceforward I will not have mercy on them, says Yahuwah Sabo. Chapter 50 In those days shall the earth deliver up from her womb, and Sheol deliver up from hers that which it has received, and destruction shall restore that which it owes. He shall select the righteous and holy from among them, for the day of their salvation has approached. 
And in those days shall the elect one sit upon his throne, while every secret of intellectual wisdom shall proceed from his mouth. For Yahuwah Sevaot has gifted and glorified him. In those days the mountains shall skip like rams, and the hills shall leap like young sheep satiated with milk, and all shall become angels in heaven. Their countenance shall be bright with joy, for in those days shall the elect one be exalted. The earth shall rejoice, the righteous shall inhabit it, and the elect possess it. Chapter 51 After that period, in the place where I had seen every secret sight, I was snatched up in a whirlwind and carried off westwards. There my eyes beheld the secrets of heaven, and all which existed on earth, a mountain of iron, a mountain of copper, a mountain of silver, a mountain of gold, a mountain of fluid metal, and a mountain of lead. And I inquired of the angel who went with me, saying, What are these things, which in secret I behold? He said, All these things which you behold shall be for the dominion of Hamashiach, that he may command, and be powerful upon earth. And that angel of peace answered me, saying, Wait but a short time, and you shall understand, and every secret thing shall be revealed to you, which Yahuwah Sabaoth has decreed. Those mountains which you have seen, the mountain of iron, the mountain of copper, the mountain of silver, the mountain of gold, the mountain of fluid metal, and the mountain of lead, all these in the presence of the elect one shall be like a honeycomb before the fire, and like water descending from above upon these mountains, and shall become debilitated before his feet. In those days men shall not be saved by gold and by silver, nor shall they have it in their power to secure themselves, and to fly. There shall be neither iron for war, nor coat, of mail for the breast. Copper shall be useless, useless also that which neither rusts nor consumes away, and lead shall not be coveted. All these things shall be rejected, and perish from off the earth, when the elect one shall appear in the presence of Yahuwah Savaot. Chapter 53 There my eyes beheld a deep valley, and wide was its entrance. All who dwell on land, on the sea, and in islands shall bring to it gifts, presents, and offerings. Yet that deep valley shall not be full. Their hands shall commit iniquity. Whatsoever they produce by labor, the sinners shall devour with crime. But they shall perish from the face of Yahuwah Tzavaot, and from the face of his earth. They shall stand up, and shall perish forever and ever. I beheld the angels of punishment, who were dwelling there, in preparing every instrument of Satan. Then I inquired of the angel of peace, who proceeded with me, for whom those instruments were preparing. He said, These they are preparing for the kings and powerful ones of the earth, that thus they may perish. After which the righteous and chosen house of his assembly shall appear, and thenceforward unchangeable in the name of Yahuwah Sabaoth. Nor shall those mountains exist in his presence, as the earth and the hills, as the fountains of water exist, and the righteous shall be relieved from the vexation of sinners. Chapter 54 Then I looked and turned myself to another part of the earth, where I beheld a deep valley burning with fire. To this valley they brought monarchs and the mighty. And there my eyes beheld the instruments which they were making, fetters of iron of immeasurable weight. Then I inquired of the angel of peace who proceeded with me, saying, For whom are these fetters and instruments prepared? He replied, These are prepared for the host of Azazel, that they may be delivered over and adjudged to the lowest condemnation, and that their angels may be overwhelmed with hurled stones, as Yahuwah Sabaoth has commanded. Michael and Gabriel, Raphael and Phanuel shall be strengthened in that day, and shall then cast them into a furnace of blazing fire, that Yahuwah Sabaoth may be avenged of them for their crimes, because they became ministers of Satan, and seduced those who dwell upon earth. In those days shall punishment go forth from Yahuwah Tzavot, and the receptacles of water which are above the heavens shall be opened, and the fountains likewise, which are under the heavens and under the earth. All the waters which are in the heavens and above them shall be mixed together. The water which is above heaven shall be the male, and the water which is under the earth shall be the female, and all shall be destroyed who dwell upon earth and who dwell under the extremities of heaven. By these means shall they understand the iniquity which they have committed on earth, and by these means shall they perish. 
Chapter 55 Afterwards, the Ancient of Days sighed and said, In vain have I destroyed all the inhabitants of the earth. And he swore by his great name, Henceforward I will not act thus towards all those who dwell upon earth. But I will place a sign in the heavens, and it shall be a faithful witness between me and them forever, as long as the days of heaven and earth last upon the earth. Afterwards, according to this my decree, when I shall be disposed to seize them beforehand, by the instrumentality of angels, in the day of affliction and trouble, my wrath and my punishment shall remain upon them. My punishment and my wrath, says Elohim Yahuwah Tzavot. O you kings, O you mighty, who inhabit the world, you shall behold my elect one, sitting upon the throne of my glory. And he shall judge Azazel, all his associates, and all his hosts, in the name of Yahuwah Tzavot. There likewise I beheld hosts of angels who were moving in punishment, confined in a network of iron and brass. Then I inquired of the angel of peace who proceeded with me, to whom those under confinement were going. He said, To each of their elect and their beloved, that they may be cast into the fountains and deep recesses of the valley. And that valley should be filled with their elect and beloved, the days of whose life shall be consumed, but the days of their error shall be innumerable. Then shall angels combine together and conspire. The chiefs of the east, among the Parthians and Medes, shall remove kings, in whom a ruach of perturbation shall enter. They shall hurl them from their thrones, springing as lions from their dens, and like famished wolves into the midst of the flock. They shall go up and tread upon the land of their elect. The land of their elect shall be before them. The threshing floor, the path, and the city of my righteous shall impede their horses. They shall rise up to destroy each other. Their right hand shall be strengthened, nor shall a man acknowledge his friend or his brother, nor the son his father and his mother, until the number of the dead bodies is their death and punishment. Neither shall this take place without cause. In those days shall the mouth of Sheol be opened, into which they shall be emerged. Sheol shall destroy and swallow up sinners from the face of the elect. Chapter 56 After this I beheld another army of chariots with men riding in them, and they came upon the wind from the east, from the west, and from the south. The sound of the noise of their chariots was heard, and when that agitation took place, the Chodashim out of heaven perceived it, the pillar of the earth shook from its foundation, and the sound was heard from the extremities of the earth unto the extremities of heaven at the same time. Then they all fell down and worshipped Yahuwah Sava'ot. This is the end of the second parable. Chapter 57 I now began to utter the third parable concerning the Chodashim and the elect. Blessed are you, O Chodashim and elect, for glorious is your lot. The Chodashim shall exist in the light of the sun and the elect in the light of everlasting life, the days of whose life shall never terminate, nor shall the days of the Chodeshim be numbered, who seek for light and obtain righteousness with Yahuwah Sava'ot. Peace be to the Chodeshim with Yahuwah of the world. Henceforward shall the Chodeshim be told to seek in heaven the secrets of righteousness, the portion of belief. For like the sun has it arisen upon the earth, while darkness has passed away. There shall be light interminable, nor shall they enter upon the enumeration of time, for darkness shall be previously destroyed, and light shall increase before Yahuwah Sava'ot. Before Yahuwah Sava'ot shall the light of uprightness increase forever. Chapter 58 In those days my eyes beheld the secrets of the lightnings, and the splendors, and the judgment belonging to them. They lighten for a blessing and for a curse, according to the will of Yahuwah Sava'ot. And there I saw the secrets of the thunder, when it rattles above in heaven, and its sound is heard. The habitations also of the earth were shown to me. The sound of the thunder is for peace and for blessing, as well as for a curse, according to the word of Yahuwah Sava'ot. Afterwards, every secret of the splendors and of the lightnings was seen by me. For blessing and for fertility they lighten. Chapter 59 In the five hundredth year, and in the seventh month, on the fourteenth day of the month, of the lifetime of Hanuk, in that parable, I saw that the heavens of heavens shook, that it shook violently, 
and that the powers of El Elyon and the angels, thousands and thousands, and myriads of myriads, were agitated with great agitation. And when I looked, the Ancient of Days was sitting on the throne of his glory, while the angels and Chodashim were standing around him. A great trembling came upon me, and terror seized me. My loins were bowed down and loosened, my mind was dissolved, and I fell upon my face. The holy Michael, another holy angel, one of the holy ones, was sent, who raised me up. And when he raised me, my ruach returned, for I was incapable of enduring this vision of violence, its agitation, and the concussion of heaven. Then holy Michael said to me, Why are you disturbed at this vision? Hitherto has existed the day of mercy, and he has been merciful and long-suffering towards all who dwell upon the earth. But when the time shall come, then the power, the punishment, and the judgment, which Yahuwah Sava'ot has prepared for those who prostrate themselves to the judgment of righteousness, for those who abjure that judgment, and for those who take his name in vain. That day has been prepared for the elect as a covenant, and for sinners as an inquisition. In that day shall be distributed two monsters, a female monster whose name is Leviathan, dwelling in the depths of the sea, above the springs of waters, and a male monster whose name is Behemoth, which possesses on his breast the invisible wilderness. His name was Dendayen in the east of the garden, where the elect and righteous will dwell, where he received it from my ancestor, who was man, from Adam, the first of men, whom Yahuwah Tzavaot made. Then I asked of another angel to show me the power of those monsters, how they became separated, and how they became separated on the same day, one in the depths of the sea, and one in the dry desert. And he said, You, son of Adam, are here desirous of understanding secret things. And the angel of peace who was with me said, These two monsters are by the power of Elohim prepared to become food, that the punishment of Elohim may not be in vain. Then shall children be slain with their mothers, and sons with their fathers. And when the punishment of Yahuwah Tzavaot shall continue, upon them shall it continue, that the punishment of Yahuwah Tzavaot may not take place in vain. After that, judgment shall exist with mercy and long-suffering. Chapter 60 Then another angel who proceeded with me spoke to me, and showed me the first and last secrets in heaven above and in the depths of the earth in the extremities of heaven, and in the foundations of it, and in the receptacle of the winds. He showed me how their ruachot were divided, how they were balanced, and how both the springs and the winds were numbered according to the force of their ruach. He showed me the power of the moon's light, that its power is a just one, as well as the divisions of the stars, according to their respective names. Every division is divided, that the lightning flashes, that its troops immediately obey, and that a cessation takes place during thunder in continuance of its sound. Nor are the thunder and the lightning separated. Neither do both of them move with one ruach, yet they are not separated. For when the lightning lightens, the thunder sounds, and the ruach at a proper period pauses, making an equal division between them, for the receptacle, upon which their periods depend, is as sand. Each of them at a proper season is restrained with the bridle and turned by the power of the Ruach, which thus propels according to the spacious extent of the earth. The Ruach likewise of the sea is potent and strong, and as a strong power causes it to ebb, so is it driven forwards and scattered against the mountains of the earth. The Ruach of the frost has its angel. In the Ruach of hail there is a good angel. The rock of snow seizes in its strength, and a solitary rock is in it, which ascends from it like vapor, and is called refrigeration. The ruach also of mist dwells with them in their receptacle, but it has a receptacle to itself, for its progress is in splendor. In light and in darkness, in winter and in summer, its receptacle is bright, and it is an angel. The abode of the ruach of dew is in the extremities of heaven, in connection with the receptacle of rain, and its progress is in winter and in summer. The cloud produced by it and the cloud of the mist become united. One gives to the other, and when the rock of rain is in motion from its receptacle, angels come, 
and opening its receptacle, bring it forth. When likewise it is sprinkled over all the earth, it forms a union with every kind of water on the ground, for the waters remain on the ground as nourishment to the earth from El Elyon, who is in heaven. Upon this account, therefore, there is a regulation in the quantity of rain, which the angels receive. These things I saw, all of them, even paradise. Chapter 61 In those days I beheld long ropes given to those angels, who took to their wings and fled, advancing towards the north. And I inquired of the angels, saying, Wherefore have they taken these long ropes, and gone forth? He said, They are gone forth to measure. The angel who proceeded with me said, These are the measures of the righteous, and cords shall the righteous bring, that they may trust in the name of Yahuwah Tzavuot forever and ever. The elect shall begin to dwell with the elect. And these are the measures which shall be given to belief, and shall strengthen the words of righteousness. These measures shall reveal all the secrets in the depth of the earth. And those who have been destroyed in the desert, and who have been devoured by the fish of the sea, and by wild beasts, shall return, and trust in the day of the elect one. For none shall perish in the presence of Yahuwah Tzavuot, nor shall any be capable of perishing. Then they received the commandment, all in the heavens above, to whom a combined power, voice, and splendor, like fire, were given. And first with voice they blessed him, they exalted him, they glorified him with wisdom, and ascribed to him wisdom with the word, and with the breath of life. Then Yahuwah Sabaoth seated upon the throne of his glory, the elect one, who shall judge all the works of the holy, in heaven above, and in a balance shall he weigh their actions. When he shall lift up his countenance to judge their secret ways in the word of the name of Yahuwah Sabaoth, and their progress in the path of the righteous judgment of El Elyon. They shall all speak with united voice, and bless, glorify, exalt, and praise in the name of Yahuwah Tzavuot. He shall call to every power of the heavens, to all the holy above, and to the power of Elohim, the Cherubim, the Seraphim, and the Ophanim, all the angel of power, and all the angels of Yahuwah, namely, of the elect one, and of the other power, who is upon earth over the water on that day, shall raise their united voice, shall bless, glorify, praise, and exalt with the Ruach Emunah, with the Ruach Chachma and Netzach, with the Ruach Chesed, with the Ruach Mishpat and Shalom, and with the Ruach Ratzon. All shall say with united voice, Blessed is he, and the name of Yahuwah Tzavuot shall be blessed forever and ever. All who sleep not shall bless it in the heaven above. All the holy in heaven shall bless it, all the elect who dwell in the garden of life, in every rock of light, who is capable of blessing, glorifying, exalting, and praising your holy name, and all flesh, more than the powers, shall glorify and bless your name forever and ever. For great is the mercy of Yahuwah Tzavuot. Long-suffering is he, and all his works, all his power, great as are the things which he has done, as he revealed to the Chodeshim and to the elect, in the name of Yahuwah Tzavuot. Chapter 62 Thus Yahuwah commanded the kings, the princes, the exalted, and those who dwell on the earth, saying, Open your eyes and lift up your horns, if you are capable of comprehending the elect one. Yahuwah Tzavuot sat upon the throne of his glory, and the Ruach Tzedakah was poured out over him. The word of his mouth shall destroy all the sinners and all the wicked, who shall perish at his presence. In that day shall all the kings, the princes, the exalted, and those who possess the earth, stand up, behold, and perceive that he is sitting on the throne of his glory, that before him the Chodeshim shall be judged in righteousness, and that nothing which shall be spoken before him shall be in vain. Trouble shall come upon them, as upon a woman in travail, whose labor is severe, when her child comes to the mouth of the womb, and she finds it difficult to bring forth. One portion of them shall look upon another, they shall be astonished, and shall humble their countenance, and trouble shall seize them, when they shall behold this son of Adam sitting upon the throne of his glory. Then shall the kings, the princes, and all who possess the earth glorify him who has dominion over all things. Him who was concealed, for from the beginning the son of Adam existed in secret, 
which El Elyon preserved in the presence of his power and revealed to the elect. He shall sow the assembly of the Chodeshim and of the elect, and all the elect shall stand before him in that day. All the kings, the princes, the exalted, and those who rule over all the earth shall fall down on their faces before him and shall worship him. They shall fix their hopes on this son of Adam, shall pray to him and petition him for mercy. Then shall Yahuwah Tzavahot hasten to expel them from his presence. Their faces shall be full of confusion, and their faces shall darkness cover. The angels shall take them to punishment, that vengeance may be inflicted on those who have oppressed his children and his elect. And they shall become an example to the Chodeshim and to his elect. Through them shall these be made joyful, for the anger of Yahuwah Tzavahot shall rest upon them. Then the sword of Yahuwah Tzavahot shall be drunk with their blood, but the Chodeshim and elect shall be safe in that day, nor the face of the sinners and the wicked shall they thenceforward behold. Yahuwah Tzavahot shall remain over them, and with the son of Adam shall they dwell, eat, lie down, and rise up forever and ever. The Chodeshim and the elect have arisen from the earth, have left off to depress their countenances, and have been clothed with the garment of life. That garment of life is with Yahuwah Sevaot, in whose presence your garment shall not wax old, nor shall your glory diminish. Chapter 63 In those days the kings who possess the earth shall be punished by the angels of his wrath, wheresoever they shall be delivered up, that he may give rest for a short period, and that they may fall down and worship before Yahuwah Sevaot, confessing their sins before him. They shall bless and glorify Yahuwah Sabaoth, saying, Blessed is Yahuwah Sabaoth, Yahuwah of kings, Yahuwah of princes, Yahuwah of the rich, Yahuwah of glory, and Yahuwah of wisdom. He shall enlighten every secret thing. Your power is from generation to generation, and your glory forever and ever. Deep are all your secrets, and numberless, and your righteousness cannot be calculated. Now we know that we should glorify and bless Yahuwah of kings, him who is king over all things. They shall also say, Who has granted us rest to glorify, laud, bless, and confess in the presence of his glory? And now small is the rest we desire, but we do not find, we reject, and do not possess. Light has passed away from before us, and darkness our thrones forever. For we have not confessed before him, we have not glorified the name of Yahuwah of kings. We have not glorified Yahuwah in all his works. But we have trusted in the scepter of our dominion and of our glory. In the day of our suffering and of our trouble, he will not save us. Neither shall we find rest. We confess that our Adonai is faithful in all his works, in all his judgments, in his righteousness. In his judgments, he pays no respect to persons. And we must depart from his presence on account of our deeds. All our sins are truly without number. Then shall they say to themselves, Our souls are satiated with the instruments of crime, but that prevents us not from descending to the flaming womb of Sheol. Afterwards, their countenances shall be filled with darkness and confusion before the son of Adam, from whose presence they shall be expelled, and before whom the sword shall remain to expel them. Thus says Yahuwah Sevaot, This is the decree and the judgment against the princes, the kings, the exalted, and those who possess the earth, in the presence of Yahuwah Tzavahot. Chapter 64 I saw also other countenances in that secret place. I heard the voice of an angel saying, These are the angels who have descended from heaven to earth, and have revealed secrets to the sons of men, and have seduced the sons of men to the commission of sin. Vision of Noah Chapter 65 in those days, Noah saw that the earth became inclined, and that destruction approached. Then he lifted up his feet and went to the ends of the earth, to the dwelling of his great-grandfather, Hanok. And Noah cried with a bitter voice, Hear me, hear me, hear me, three times. And he said, Tell me what is transacting upon the earth, for the earth labors and is violently shaken. Surely I shall perish with it. After this there was a great perturbation on earth, and a voice was heard from heaven. I fell down on my face, when my great-grandfather Hinach came and stood by me. He said to me, Why have you cried out to me with a bitter cry and lamentation? 
A commandment has gone forth from Yahuwah against those who dwell on the earth, that they may be destroyed. For they know every secret of the angels, every oppressive and secret power of the devils, and every power of those who commit sorcery, as well as of those who make molten in the whole earth. How is silver produced from the dust of the earth? And how on the earth does the drop exist? For lead and tin are not produced from earth, as the primary fountain of their production. There is an angel standing upon it, and that angel struggles to prevail. Afterwards, my great-grandfather Hanok seized me with his hand, raising me up, and saying to me, Go, for I have asked Yahuwah Sevaot respecting this perturbation of the earth, who replied, On account of their impiety have their innumerable judgments been consummated before me. Because of the sorceries which they have searched out and learned, the earth and those who dwell upon it will be destroyed, and that to these there will be no refuge forever. They have discovered secrets, those who have been judged, but not you, my son. Yahuwah Sava'od knows that you are pure and good from the reproach of secrets. He, the Holy One, will establish your name in the midst of the Chodeshim and will guard you from those who dwell upon the earth. He will establish your seed in righteousness, for kings and for great glory, and from your seed shall spring forth righteousness and holy men without number forever. Chapter 66 After this he showed me the angels of punishment, who were prepared to come, and to open all the mighty waters under the earth, that they may be for judgment, and for the destruction of all those who remain and dwell upon the earth. And Yahuwah Sevaot commanded the angels who went forth, not to take up and guard the men, for those angels are over all the mighty waters. Then I went out from the presence of Hanach. Chapter 67 In those days the word of Elohim came to me and said, Noah, behold, your lot has ascended up to me, a lot void of crime, a lot beloved and upright. Now then, the angels are making a wooden structure, but when they proceed to this, I will put my hand upon it and guard it. The seed of life shall arise from it, and change shall take place, that the dry land shall not be left empty, I will establish your seed before me forever and ever, in the seed of those who dwell with you on the surface of the earth. It shall be blessed and multiplied in the presence of the earth, in the name of Yahuwah. And they shall confine those angels who disclosed impiety in that burning valley which at first my great-grandfather Hanach showed me in the west, where there were mountains of gold and silver, of iron, of fluid metal, and of tin. I beheld that valley in which there was great perturbation, and the waters were troubled. And when all this was effected, from the fluid mass of fire, and troubled them in that place, there arose a strong smell of sulfur, which became mixed with the waters, and the valleys of the angels, who had been guilty of seduction, burned underneath the soil. Through that valley also rivers of fire were flowing, to which those angels shall be condemned, who seduced the inhabitants of the earth. And in those days shall these waters be to kings, to princes, to the exalted, and to the inhabitants of the earth, for the healing of the soul and body, and for the judgment of the Ruach. Their Ruach ho shall be full of lust, that they may be judged in their bodies, because they have denied Yahuwah Sabaot, and they perceived their condemnation day by day, they believe not in his name. And as the inflammation of their bodies shall be great, so shall their Ruach ho undergo a change forever. For no word which is uttered before Yahuwah Sabaot shall be in vain. Judgment has come upon them, because they trusted in their carnal revelry, and denied Yahuwah Sabaot. In those days shall the waters of that valley be changed, for when the angels shall be judged, then shall the heat of those springs of water experience an alteration. And when the angels shall ascend, the water of the spring shall again undergo a change, and be frozen. Then I heard holy Michael answering and saying, this judgment, with which the angels shall be judged, shall bear testimony against the kings, the princes, and those who possess the earth. For these waters of judgment shall be for their healing, and for the death of their bodies. But they shall not perceive and believe that the waters will be changed, and become a fire, which shall blaze forever. Chapter 68 After this he gave me the marks of all the secret things in the sephir of my great-grandfather Hanok and in the parables which had been given to him, inserting them for me among the words of the sephir of parables. At that time, holy Michael answered and said to Raphael, 
The power of the Ruach hurries me away and impels me on. The severity of the judgment, of the secret judgment of the angels, who is capable of endurance of that severe judgment which has taken place and been made permanent without being melted at the sight of it? Again, Holy Michael answered and said to Holy Raphael, Who is there whose heart is not softened by it, and whose mind is not troubled at this thing? Judgment has gone forth against them by those who have thus dragged them away. And that was when they stood in the presence of Yahuwah Tzavah. In like manner also Holy Raphael said to Raphael, They shall not be before the eye of Yahuwah, since Yahuwah Tzavah has been offended with them, for like lords have they conducted themselves. Therefore will he bring upon them a secret judgment forever and ever. For neither shall angel nor man receive a portion of it, but they alone shall receive their own judgment forever and ever. Chapter 69 After this judgment they shall be astonished and irritated, for it shall be exhibited to the inhabitants of the earth. Behold the names of those angels. These are their names. The first of them is Shemayaza, the second, Aristikapha, the third, Armen, the fourth, Kakabael, the fifth, Turel, the sixth, Rumael, the seventh, Danyael, the eighth, Kael, the ninth, Barakael, the tenth, Azazel, the eleventh, Armors, the twelfth, Batariel, the thirteenth, Azazel, the fourteenth, Ananel, the fifteenth, Turial, the sixteenth, Simipesahel, the seventeenth, Yetarel, the eighteenth, Tumael, the nineteenth, Tarel, the twentieth, Rumel, the twenty-first, Atzazel. These are the chiefs of their angels, and the names of the leaders of their hundreds, and the leaders of their fifties, and the leaders of their tens. The name of the first is Yukin, the rebel. It was he who seduced all the sons of the holy angels, and causing them to descend on earth, led astray the offspring of men. The name of the second is Kesabel, who pointed out evil counsel to the sons of the holy angels, and induced them to corrupt their bodies by generating mankind. The name of the third is Gadrel. He discovered every stroke of death to the children of men. He seduced Hua, and discovered to the children of men the instruments of death the coat of mail, the shield, and the sword for slaughter, every instrument of death to the children of men. From his hand were derived to them who dwell upon earth, from that period forever. The name of the fourth is Penuma. He discovered to the children of men bitterness and sweetness, and pointed out to them every secret of their wisdom. He taught men to understand writing and ink and paper. Therefore numerous have been those who have gone astray from every period of the world, even to this day. For men were not born for this, thus with pen and with ink to confirm their belief, since they were not created, except that, like the angels, they might remain righteous and pure. Nor would death, which destroys everything, have affected them. But by this their knowledge they perish, and by this also power consumes. The name of the fifth is Kaziad, he discovered to the children of men every wicked stroke of the ruacho and of devils. The stroke to the embryo in the womb, to diminish. The stroke to the ruach by the bite of the serpent, and the midday stroke of the offspring of the serpent, the name of which is Tabaet. This is the number of the Kazbel, the principal part of the oath which El Elyon, dwelling in glory, revealed to the holy ones. Its name is Beka. He spoke to Holy Michael to discover to them the sacred name, that they might understand that secret name, and thus remember the oath, and that those who pointed out every secret thing to the children of men might tremble at the name and oath. This is the power of that oath, for powerful it is, and strong. And he established this oath of Ake by the instrumentality of the Holy Michael. These are the secrets of this oath, and by it were they confirmed. Heaven was suspended by it before the world was made, forever. By it has earth been founded upon the flood, while from the concealed parts of the hills the agitated waters proceed forth from the creation to the end of the world. By this oath the sea has been formed, and the foundation of it. 
During the period of its fury, he established the sand against it, which continues unchanged forever. And by this oath, the abyss has been made strong, nor is it removable from its station forever and ever. By this oath, the sun and moon complete their progress, never swerving from the command to them forever and ever. By this oath, the stars complete their progress, and when their names are called, they return in answer forever and ever. Thus the heavens have the blowing of the winds. All of them have ruachot, and are a complete combination of breathings. There the treasures of thunder are kept, and the splendor of the lightning. There are kept the treasures of hail and of frost, the treasures of snow, the treasures of rain and of dew. All these confess and laud before Yahuwah Tzavahot. They glorify with all their power of praise, and he sustains them all in thanksgiving, while they laud, glorify, and exalt the name of Yahuwah Tzavahot forever and ever. And with them he establishes this oath, by which they and their paths are preserved, nor does their progress perish. Great was their joy. They blessed, glorified, and exalted, because the name of the son of Adam was revealed to them. He sat upon the throne of his glory, and the principal part of the judgment was assigned to him, the son of Adam. Sinners shall disappear and perish from the face of the earth, while those who seduce them shall be bound with chains forever. According to their ranks of corruption shall they be imprisoned, and all their work shall disappear from the face of the earth. Nor thenceforward shall there be any to corrupt, for the son of Adam has been seen sitting on the throne of his glory. Everything wicked shall disappear and depart from before his face, and the word of the son of Adam shall become powerful in the presence of Yahuwah Tzavahot. This is the third parable of Chenach. Chapter 70 After this, the name of the son of Adam, living with Yahuwah Tzavahot, was exalted by the inhabitants of the earth. It was exalted in the chariots of the Ruach, and the name went forth in the midst of them. From that time I was not drawn into the midst of them, but he seated me between two Ruacho, between the north and the west, where the angels received their ropes, to measure out a place for the elect and the righteous. There I beheld the fathers of the first men, and the Chodeshim, who dwell in that place forever. Chapter 71 Afterward, my Ruach was concealed, ascending into the heavens. I beheld the sons of the holy angels treading on flaming fire, whose garments and robes were white, and whose countenances were transparent as crystal. I saw two rivers of fire glittering like the hyacinth. Then I fell on my face before Yahuwah Tzavot. And Michael, one of the archangels, took me by my right hand, raised me up, and brought me out where was every secret mercy and secret righteousness. He showed me all the hidden things of the extremities of heaven, all the receptacles of the stars, and the splendors of all, from whence they went forth before the face of the holy. And he concealed the Ruach of Chenach in the heaven of heavens. There I beheld, in the midst of that light, a building raised with stones of ice, and in the midst of the stones tongues of living fire. My Ruach saw around the circle of this flaming habitation, on one of its extremities, rivers full of living fire which encompassed it. Then the seraphim, the cherubim, and the ophanim surrounded it. These are those who never sleep, but watch the throne of his glory. And I beheld angels innumerable, thousands of thousands and myriads and myriads who surrounded that habitation. Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, Phanuel, and the holy angels who were in the heavens above went in and out of it. Michael, Raphael, and Gabriel went out of that habitation and holy angels innumerable. With them was the Ancient of Days, whose head was white as wool and pure, and his robe was indescribable. Then I fell upon my face, while all my flesh was dissolved, and my ruach became changed. I cried out with a loud voice, with a powerful ruach, blessing, glorifying, and exalting. And those blessings, which proceeded from my mouth, became acceptable in the presence of the Ancient of Days. The Ancient of Days came with Michael, and Gabriel, and Raphael, and Phanuel, with thousands of thousands, and myriads and myriads, which could not be numbered. Then that angel came to me, and with his voice saluted me, saying, You are the son of Adam, who is born for righteousness, and righteousness has rested upon you. The righteousness of the Ancient of Days shall not forsake you. He said, On you shall he confer peace in the name of the existing world, for from thence has peace gone forth since the world was created. 
and thus shall it happen to you forever and ever. All who shall exist and who shall walk in your path of righteousness shall not forsake you forever. With you shall be their habitations, with you their lot, nor from you shall they be separated forever and ever. And thus shall length of days be with the son of Adam. Peace shall be to the righteous, and the path of integrity shall the righteous pursue, in the name of Yahuwah Tzavahot, forever and ever. Chapter 72 The Sefer of the Revolutions of the Luminaries of Heaven, according to the respective classes, the respective powers, the respective periods, the respective names, the places where they commence their progress, and the respective months, which Uriel, the holy angel who was with me, explained to me, he who conducted them, the whole account of them, according to every year of the world forever, until a new work shall be effected, which will be eternal. This is the first law of the luminaries. The sun and the light arrive at the gates of heaven, which are on the east, and on the west of it at the western gates of heaven. I beheld the gates whence the sun goes forth, and the gates where the sun sets, in which gates also the moon rises and sets, and the conductors of the stars, among those who precede them, six at the rising, and six at the setting of the sun. All these respectively, one after another, are on a level, and numerous windows are on the right and on the left sides of those gates. First proceeds forth that great luminary, which is called the sun, the orb of which is the orb of heaven, the whole of it being replete with splendid and flaming fire. Its chariot, where it ascends, the wind blows. The sun sets in heaven, and, returning by the north, to proceed towards the east, is conducted so as to enter by that gate, and illuminate the face of heaven. In the same manner it goes forth in the first month by the great gate. It goes forth through the fourth of those six gates, which are at the rising of the sun. And in the fourth gate, from which the sun rises in the first month, there are twelve open windows, from which issues out a flame, when they are opened in their proper periods. When the sun rises in heaven, it goes forth through this fourth gate thirty days, and by the fourth gate in the west of heaven on a level with it descends. During that period the day is lengthened from the day, and the night curtailed from the night for thirty days. And then the day is longer by two parts than the night. The day is precisely ten parts, and the night is eight. The sun goes forth through this fourth gate, and sets in it, and turns to the fifth gate during thirty days, after which it proceeds from, and sets in, the fifth gate. Then the day becomes lengthened by a second portion, so that it is eleven parts, while the night becomes shortened, and is only seven parts. The sun now returns to the east, entering into the sixth gate, and rising and setting in the sixth gate thirty-one days, on account of its signs. At that period, the day is longer than the night, being twice the night, and become twelve parts. But the night is shortened, and becomes six parts. Then the sun rises up, that the day may be shortened, and the night lengthened. And the sun returns toward the east, entering into the sixth gate, where it rises and sets for thirty days. When that period is completed, the day becomes shortened precisely one part, so that it is eleven parts, while the night is seven parts. Then the sun goes from the west, from that sixth gate, and proceeds eastwards, rising in the fifth gate for thirty days, and setting again westwards in the fifth gate of the west. At that period the day becomes shortened two parts, and is ten parts, while the night is eight parts. Then the sun goes from the fifth gate, as it sets in the fifth gate of the west, and rises in the fourth gate for thirty-one days, on account of its signs, setting in the west. At that period the day is made equal with the night, and, being equal with it, the night becomes nine parts, and the day nine parts. Then the sun goes from that gate, as it sets in the west, and returning to the east, proceeds by the third gate for thirty days, setting in the west at the third gate. At that period the night is lengthened from the day during thirty mornings, and the day is curtailed from the day during thirty days, the night being ten parts precisely, and the day eight parts. The sun now goes from the third gate, as it sets in the third gate in the west, but returning to the east, it proceeds by the second gate of the east for thirty days. In like manner also it sets in the second gate in the west of heaven. 
At that period, the night is eleven parts, and the day seven parts. Then the sun goes at the time, from the second gate, as it sets in the second gate in the west, but returns to the east, proceeding by the first gate for thirty-one days, and sets in the west in the first gate. At that period, that night is lengthened as much again as the day. It is twelve parts precisely, while the day is six parts. The sun has completed its beginnings, and a second time goes round from these beginnings. Into that gate it enters for thirty days, and sets in the west, in the opposite part. At that period the night is contracted in its length a fourth part, that is, one portion, and becomes eleven parts. The day is seven parts. Then the sun returns, and enters into the second gate of the east. It returns by these beginnings thirty days, rising and setting. At that period the night is contracted in its length. It becomes ten parts, and the day eight parts. Then the sun goes from that second gate and sets in the west, but returns to the east and rises in the east in the third gate, thirty-one days, setting in the west of heaven. At that period the night becomes shortened, it is nine parts, and the night is equal with the day. The year is precisely three hundred and sixty-four days. The lengthening of the day and night, and the contraction of the day and night, are made to differ from each other by the progress of the sun. By means of this progress the day is daily lengthened, and the night greatly shortened. This is the law and progress of the sun, and its turning when it turns back, turning during sixty days and going forth. This is the great everlasting luminary, that which he names the sun forever and ever. This also is that which goes forth a great luminary, and which is named after its peculiar kind, as Elohim commanded. And thus it goes in and out, neither slackening nor resting, but running on its chariot, by day and by night. Its light is seven times brighter than that of the moon, but the dimensions of both are equal. Chapter 73 After this law I beheld another law of an inferior luminary, the name of which is the moon, and the orb of which is as the orb of heaven. Its chariot secretly ascends, the wind blows, and light is given to it by measure. Every month at its exit and entrance it becomes changed, and its periods are as the periods of the sun, and when the moon is full, its light is a seventh portion from the light of the sun. Thus it rises, and at its commencement towards the east goes forth for thirty days. At that time it appears, and becomes to you the beginning of the month, thirty days with the sun in the gate from which the sun goes forth. Half of it is in extent seven portions, one, and the whole of its orb is void of light, except a seventh portion out of the fourteen portions of its light. And in a day, it receives a seventh portion, or half, of its light. Its light is by sevens, by one portion, and by the half. It sets with the sun. And when the sun rises, the moon rises with it, receiving half a portion of light. On that night, when it commences its period, previously to the day of the month, the moon sets with the sun. And on that night it is dark fourteen portions, that is, half. But it rises on that day with one-seventh portion precisely, and in its progress declines from the rising of the sun. During the remainder of its period, its light increases to fourteen portions. Chapter 74 Then I saw another progress and regulation which he effected in the law of the moon. The progress of the moons and everything, Uriel showed me, the holy angel who conducted them all. Their stations I wrote down as he showed them to me. I wrote down their months as they occur, and the appearance of their light, until it is completed in fifteen days. In each of its two seven portions, it completes all its light at rising and at setting. On stated months, it changes settings, and on stated months, it makes its progress on each. In two, the moon sets with the sun, in those two gates which are in the midst, in the third and fourth gate. It goes forth for seven days and makes its circuit. Again it returns to the gate once the sun goes forth, and in that completes the whole of its light. Then it declines from the sun, and enters in eight days into the sixth gate, from which the sun goes forth. When the sun proceeds to the fourth gate, it goes forth for seven days, until it passes from the fifth. Again it returns in seven days to the fourth gate, and completing all its light, 
declines and passes on by the first gate in eight days, and returns in seven days to the fourth gate, from which the sun goes forth. Thus I beheld their stations, as according to the fixed order of the months the sun rises and sets. At those times there is an excess of thirty days belonging to the sun in five years, all the days belonging to each year of the five years, when completed, amount to 364 days, and to the sun and stars belong six days, six days in each of the five years, thirty days belonging to them, so that the moon has thirty days less than the sun and stars. The moon brings on all the years exactly, that their stations may come neither too forwards nor too backwards a single day, or that the years may be changed with correct precision in 364 days. In three years, the days are 1,092. In five years, they are 1,820. And in eight years, 2,912 days. To the moon alone belong in three years 1,062 days. In five years, it has 50 days less. For an addition being made to the 62 days, in five years, there are 1,770 days. And the days of the moon in eight years are 2,832 days. For its days in eight years are less 80 days, which 80 days are its diminution in eight years. The year then becomes truly complete according to the station of the moon and the station of the sun, which rises in the gates, which rise and set in them for 30 days. Chapter 75 These are the leaders of the chiefs of the thousands, which are over all creation, over all the stars, which the four which are added and never separated from the place allotted them according to the complete calculation of the year. And these serve four days, which are not calculated in the calculation of the year. Respecting them, men greatly err, for these luminaries truly serve, in the dwelling place of the world, one day in the first gate, and one in the third gate, one in the fourth gate, and one in the sixth gate and the harmony of the world becomes complete every 364 state of it. For the signs, the seasons, the years, and the days, Uriel showed me, the angel whom Yahuwah of glory appointed over all the luminaries, of heaven in heaven, and in the world, that they might rule in the face of the sky, and appearing over the earth, become conductors of the days and nights. The sun, the moon, the stars, and all the ministers of heaven, which make their circuit with all their chariots of heaven. Thus Uriel showed me twelve gates open for the circuit of the chariots of the sun in heaven, from which the rays of the sun shoot forth. From these proceed heat over the earth, when they are opened in their stated seasons. They are for the winds, and the ruach of dew, when in their seasons they are opened, opened in heaven at extremities. Twelve gates I beheld in heaven, at the extremities of the earth, through which the sun, moon, and stars, and all the works of heaven proceed at their rising and setting. Many windows also are open on the right and on the left. One window at a season grows extremely hot. So also are there gates from which the stars go forth as they are commanded, and in which they set according to their number. I saw likewise the chariots of heaven running in the world above to those gates in which the stars turn which never set. One of these is greater than all, which goes round the whole world. Chapter 76 And at the extremities of the earth I beheld twelve gates open for all the winds, from which they proceed and blow over the earth. Three of them are open in the front of heaven, three in the west, three on the right side of heaven, and three on the left. The first three are those which are towards the east, three are towards the north, three behind those which are upon the left, towards the south, and three on the west. From four of them proceed winds of blessing and of health, and from eight proceed winds of punishment, when they are sent to destroy the earth and the heaven above it, all its inhabitants, and all which are in the waters or on dry land. The first of these winds proceeds from the gate termed the eastern, through the first gate on the east, which inclines southwards. From this goes forth destruction, drought, heat, and perdition. From the second gate, the middle one, proceeds equity. There issue from it rain, fruitfulness, health, and dew, 
and from the third gate northwards proceed cold and drought. After these proceed the south winds through three principal gates. Through their first gate, which inclines eastwards, proceed the hot wind. But from the middle gate proceed grateful odor, dew, rain, health, and life. From the third gate, which is westwards, proceed dew, rain, blight, and destruction. After these are the winds to the north, which is called the sea, from three gates. The seventh gate is on the east, inclining southwards. From this proceeds dew, rain, blight, and destruction. From the middle direct gate proceed rain, dew, life, and health. And from the third gate, which is westwards, inclining towards the south, proceed mist, frost, snow, rain, dew, and blight. After these four are the winds to the west, from the first gate, inclining northwards, proceed dew, rain, frost, cold, snow, and chill. From the middle gate, proceed rain, health, and blessing. And from the last gate, which is southwards, proceed drought, destruction, scorching, and perdition. The account of the twelve gates of the four quarters of heaven is ended. All their laws, all their punishment, and the health of them have I explained to you, my son, Methuselah. Chapter 77 The first wind is called the eastern, because it is the first. The second is called the south, because El Elyon there descends, and frequently there descends and is blessed forever. The western wind has the name of diminution, because there all the luminaries of heaven are diminished and descend. The fourth wind, which is named the north, is divided into three parts, one of which is for the habitation of man another for seas of water, with valleys, woods, rivers, shady places, and snow, and the third part, paradise. Seven high mountains I beheld, higher than all the mountains of the earth, from which frost proceeds, while days, seasons, and years depart and pass away. Seven rivers I beheld upon earth, greater than all rivers, one of which takes its course from the west, into a great sea its water flows. Two come from the north to the sea, their waters flowing into the Erythrean Sea on the east, and with respect to the remaining four, they take their course in the cavity of the north. Two to their sea, the Erythrean Sea, and two are poured into a great sea, where also it is said is a desert. Seven great islands I saw in the sea and on the earth, seven in the great sea. Chapter 78 The names of the sun are these. One are Yers, the other Tomas. The moon has four names. The first is Asanya, the second Ebla, the third Benes, and the fourth Ire. These are the two great luminaries, whose orbs are as the orbs of heaven, and the dimensions of both are equal. In the orb of the sun are seven parts of light, which are added to it more than to the moon. By measure it is put in, until the seventh portion of the sun is departed. They set, enter into the western gate, circuit by the north, and through the eastern gate, go forth over the face of heaven. When the moon rises, it appears in heaven, and the half of a seventh portion of light is all in it. In fourteen, the whole of its light is completed. Three quintuples light is put into it, until fifteen, its light is completed, according to the signs of the year, it has three quintuples. The moon has the half of a seventh portion. During its diminution on the first day, its light decreases a fourteenth part. On the second day, it decreases a thirteenth part. On the third day, a twelfth part. On the fourth day, an eleventh part. On the fifth day, a tenth part. On the sixth day, a ninth part. On the seventh day, it decreases an eighth part. On the eighth day, it decreases a seventh part. On the ninth day, it decreases a sixth part. On the tenth day, it decreases a fifth part. On the eleventh day, it decreases a fourth part. On the twelfth day, it decreases third part. On the thirteenth day, it decreases a second part. On the fourteenth day, it decreases a half of its seventh part. And on the fifteenth day, the whole remainder of its light is consumed. On stated months, the moon has twenty-nine days. It also has a period of twenty-eight days. Uriel likewise showed me another regulation. When light is poured into the moon, 
how it is poured into it from the sun. All the time that the moon is in progress with its light, it is poured in the presence of the sun, until light is in fourteen days completed in heaven. And when it is wholly extinguished, its light is consumed in heaven, and on the first day it is called the new moon, for on that day light is received into it. It becomes precisely completed on the day that the sun descends into the west, while the moon ascends at night from the east. The moon then shines all the night, until the sun rises before it, when the moon disappears in turn before the sun. When light comes into the moon, there again it decreases, until all its light is extinguished, and the days of the moon pass away. Then its orb remains solitary without light. During three months it affects in thirty days its period, and during three months it affects it in twenty-nine days each, in which it affects its decrease in its first period, and in the first gate in one hundred and seventy-seven days. And at the time of its going forth, during three months, it appears thirty days each, and during three months it appears twenty-nine days each. In the night it appears for each twenty as a man, and in the day as heaven, for it is nothing else except its light. Chapter 79 And now, my son Methuselah, I have shown you everything, and every ordinance of the stars of heaven is finished. He showed me every ordinance respecting these, which is at all times and at all seasons, under every influence, in all years, at the arrival, and under the rule of each, during every month and every week. Also the decrease of the moon, which is affected in the sixth gate, for in that sixth gate is its light consumed. From this is the beginning of the month, and its decrease is affected in the sixth gate in its period until 177 days are completed, according to the mode of calculation by weeks, 25 and 2 days. It is less light than that of the sun, according to the ordinance of the stars, by 5 days and 1 time precisely, when that visible situation is completed. Such is the appearance and likeness of every luminary, which Uriel, the great angel who conducts them, showed me. Chapter 80 in those days, Uriel answered and said to me, Behold, I have showed you all things, O Chanak, and all things have I revealed to you. You see the sun, the moon, and those which conduct the stars of heaven, which cause all their operations, seasons, and arrivals to return. In the days of sinners the years shall be shortened. Their seed shall be backward in their prolific soil, and everything done on earth shall be subverted and disappear in its season. The rain shall be restrained, and heaven shall stand still. In those days the fruits of the earth shall be late, and not flourish in their season, and in their season the fruits of the trees shall be withheld. The moon shall change its laws, and not be seen at its proper period, but in those days shall heaven be seen, and barrenness shall take place in the borders of the great chariots in the west. It shall shine more than the orders of light, while many chiefs among the stars of authority shall err, perverting their ways and works. Those shall not appear in their season, who commanded them, and all the classes of the stars shall be shut up against sinners. The thoughts of those who dwell on the earth shall transgress within them, and they shall be perverted in all their ways. They shall transgress and think themselves Elohim, while evil shall be multiplied among them, and punishment shall come upon them, so that all of them shall be destroyed. Chapter 81 He said, O Chanak, look on the sephir of the tablets of heaven, which have gradually dropped down, and, reading that which is written in it, understand every part of it. Then I looked on all which was written, and understood all, reading the sephir and everything written in it, all the works of man, and of all the children of flesh upon earth, during the generations of the world. Immediately after I blessed Yahuwah, the King of glory, who has thus forever formed the whole workmanship of the world, and I glorified Yahuwah on account of his long suffering and blessing towards the children of the world. At that time I said, Blessed is the man who shall die righteous and good, against whom no catalogue of crime has been written, and with whom iniquity is not found. Then those three holy ones caused me to approach, and placed me on the earth before the door of my house. And they said unto me, 
Explain everything to Methuselah, your son, and inform all your children that no flesh shall be justified before Yahuwah, for he is their creator. During one year we shall leave you with your children, until you shall again recover your strength, that you may instruct your family, write these things, and explain them to all your children. But in another year they shall take you from the midst of them, and your heart shall be strengthened, for the elect shall point out righteousness to the elect. The righteous with the righteous shall rejoice, congratulating each other, but the sinners with sinners shall die, and the perverted with the perverted shall be drowned. Those likewise who act righteously shall die on account of the works of man, and shall be gathered together on account of the works of the wicked. In those days they finished conversing with me, and I returned to my fellow men, blessing Yahuwah of worlds. Chapter 82 Now, my son Methuselah, all these things I speak unto you and write to you. To you I have revealed all, and have given you sepharim of everything. Preserve, my son Methuselah, the sepharim written by your father, that you may reveal them to future generations. Wisdom have I given you, to your children and your posterity, that they may reveal to their children, for generations forever, this wisdom in their thoughts and that those who comprehend may not slumber, but hear with their ears, that they may learn this wisdom, and be deemed worthy of eating wholesome food. Blessed are all the righteous, blessed are all who walk in righteousness, in whom is no crime, as in sinners, when all their days are numbered. With respect to the progress of the sun in heaven, it enters and goes out of gate for thirty days, with the leaders of the thousand classes of the stars, with four which are added, and appertain to the four quarters of the year, which conduct them and accompany them at four periods. Respecting these, men greatly err, and do not calculate them in the calculation of every age, for they greatly err respecting them, nor do men know accurately that they are in the calculation of the year. But indeed, these are marked down forever, one in the first gate, one in the third, one in the fourth, and one in the sixth so that the year is completed in 364 days. Truly has been stated, and accurately has been calculated that which is marked down. For the luminaries, the months, the fixed periods, the years, and the days, Uriel has explained to me, and communicated to me, whom Yahuwah of all creation, on my account, commanded, according to the might of heaven, and the power which it possesses both by night and by day, to explain light to man, of the sun, moon, and stars, and of all the powers of heaven, which are turned with the respective orbs. This is the ordinance of the stars, which set it in their places, in their seasons, in their periods, in their days, and in their months. These are the names of those who conduct them, who watch and enter in their seasons, according to their ordinance in their periods, in their months, in their influence, and in their stations. Four conductors of them first enter, who separate the four quarters of the year. After these, twelve conductors of their classes, who separate the months and the year, 364, with the leaders of a thousand, who distinguish between the days, as well as between the four additional ones, which conductors divide the four quarters of the year. These leaders of a thousand are in the midst of the conductors, and the conductors are added each behind his station and their conductors make the separation. These are the names of the conductors, who separate the four quarters of the year, who are appointed. Melkel, Halamalek, Meleal, and Narel. And the names of those who conduct them are Adnarel, Jayasasal, and Jayalamelel. These are the three who follow after the conductors of the classes each following after the three conductors of the classes, which themselves follow after those conductors of the stations, who divide the four quarters of the year. In the first part of the year rises and rules Melchias, who is named Tamani, and Zaihai, the southern son. All the days of his influence, which he rules, are ninety-one days. And these are the signs of the days which are seen upon the earth. In the days of his influence, perspiration, heat, and trouble. All the trees become fruitful. The leaf of every tree comes forth, 
the grain is reaped, the rose and every species of flowers blossoms in the field, and the trees of winter are dried up. These are the names of the conductors who are under them, Arkel, Zalsabal, and another additional conductor of a thousand is named Heloyalaf. The days of those influence have been completed. The other conductor next after them is Helemelech, whose name they call the splendid Zahai, sun. All the days of his light are ninety-one days. These are the signs of the days upon earth, heat and drought, while the trees bring forth their fruits, warmed and concocted, and give their fruits to dry. The flocks follow, mate, and bear young. All the fruits of the earth are collected, with everything in the fields, and the vines are trodden. This takes place during the time of his influence. These are their names and orders, and the conductors who are under them, of those who are chiefs of a thousand, Gedaiel, Kael, Hael. And the name of the additional leader of a thousand is Asphael. The days of his influence have been completed. Chapter 83 And now I have shown you, my son Methuselah, every sight which I saw prior to your birth. I will relate another vision, which I saw before I was married. They resemble each other. The first was when I was learning a sephir, and the other before I was married to your mother. I saw a potent vision, and on account of these things, besought Yahuwah. I was lying down in the house of my grandfather, Malalalel. I saw in a vision heaven thrown down and removed, and when it fell upon the earth, I saw likewise the earth absorbed by a great abyss, and mountains suspended over mountains. Hills were sinking upon hills, Lofty trees were gliding off from their trunks, and were in the act of being projected, and of sinking into the abyss. And at these things, the word fell down in my mouth. I cried out and said, The earth is destroyed. Then my grandfather, Malalalel, raised me up, and said to me, Why do you thus cry out, my son? And wherefore thus do you lament? I related to him the whole vision which I had seen. He said to me, Confirmed is that which you have seen, my son, and potent the vision of your dream respecting every secret sin of the earth. Its substance shall sink into the abyss, and a great destruction take place. Now, my son, rise up, and beseech Yahuwah of glory, for you are faithful, that a remnant may be left upon earth, and that he would not wholly destroy it. My son, all this calamity upon earth comes down from heaven, Upon earth shall there be a great destruction. Then I arose, prayed, and entreated, and wrote down my prayer for the generations of the world, explaining everything to my son, Methuselah. When I went down below, and looking up to heaven, beheld the sun proceeding from the east, the moon descending to the west, a few stars, and everything which Elohim has known from the beginning, I blessed Yahuwah of judgment, and magnified him, because he has sent forth the sun from the windows of the east, that, ascending and rising in the face of heaven, it might spring up, and pursue the path which has been pointed out to it. Chapter 84 I lifted up my hands in righteousness, and blessed the Holy and the Great One. I spoke with the breath of my mouth, and with a tongue of flesh, which Elohim has formed for all the sons of mortal men that with it they may speak, giving them breath, a mouth, and a tongue to converse with. Blessed are you, O Yahuwah, the King, great and powerful in your greatness, Yahuwah of all the creatures of heaven, King of kings, Elohim of the whole world, whose reign, whose kingdom, and whose majesty endure forever and ever. From generation to generation shall your dominion exist. All the heavens are your throne forever and all the earth your footstool forever and ever. For you have made them, and over all you reign. No act whatsoever exceeds your power, with your wisdom is unchangeable, nor from your throne and from your presence is it ever averted. You know all things, see and hear them, nor is anything concealed from you, for you perceive all things. The angels of your heavens have transgressed, and on mortal flesh shall your wrath remain, 
until the day of the great judgment. Now then, O Elohim, Yahuwah and Mighty King, I entreat you and beseech you to grant my prayer that a posterity may be left to me on earth, and that all of mankind may not perish, that the earth may not be left destitute, and destruction take place forever. O oh my Adonai, let the race perish from off the earth which has offended you, but a righteous and upright race established for the plant of a seed forever. Hide not your face, O Yahuwah, from the prayer of your servant. Chapter 85 after this I saw another dream, and explained it all to you, my son. Chanoch arose and said to his son Methuselah, To you, my son, will I speak. Hear my word, and incline your ear to the visionary dream of your father. Before I married your mother, Edna, I saw a vision on my bed. And behold, a cow sprung forth from the earth, and this cow was white. Afterwards, a female heifer sprung forth, and with it another heifer. The one was black, and one was red. The black heifer then struck the red one and pursued it over the earth. From that period I could see nothing more of the red heifer, but the black one increased in bulk, and a female heifer came with him. After this I saw that many cows proceeded forth, resembling him and following after him. The first female young one also went out in the presence of the first cow and sought the red heifer, but found him not and she lamented with a great lamentation while she was seeking him. Then I looked until that first cow came to her, from which time she became silent and ceased to lament. Afterwards, she calved another white cow, and again calved many cows and black heifers. In my sleep also I perceived the white bull, which in like manner grew and became a large white bull. After him many white cows came forth, resembling him, and they began to calve many white cows, which resembled them and followed each other. Chapter 86 Again I looked attentively while sleeping and surveyed heaven above, and behold a single star fell from heaven, which being raised up, ate and fed among those cows. After that I perceived other large and black cows, and behold all of them changed their stalls and pastures, while their young began to lament one with another. Again I looked in my vision and surveyed heaven, when, behold, I saw many stars which descended, and projected themselves from heaven to where was the first star. Into the midst of those young ones, while the cows were with them, feeding in the midst of them. I looked at and observed them, when, behold, they all acted after the manner of horses, and began to approach the young cows, all of whom became pregnant, and brought forth elephants, camels, and asses. At these, all the cows were alarmed and terrified when they began biting with their teeth, swallowing and striking with their horns. They began also to devour the cows, and behold, all the children of the earth trembled, shook with terror at them, and suddenly fled away. Chapter 87 Again I perceived them when they began to strike and to swallow each other, and the earth cried out, then I raised my eyes a second time towards heaven, and saw in a vision that, behold, there came forth from heaven as it were the likeness of white men. One came forth from thence, and three with him. Those three, who came forth last, seized me by my hand, and raising me up from the generations of the earth, elevated me to a high station. Then they showed me a lofty tower on the earth, while every hill became diminished, and they said, Remain here until you perceive what shall come upon those elephants, camels, and asses, upon the stars, and upon all the cows. Chapter 88 Then I looked at the one of the four, who came forth first. He seized the first star which fell down from heaven, and binding it hand and foot, he cast it into a valley, a valley narrow, deep, stupendous, and gloomy. Then one of them drew his sword, and gave it to the elephants, camels, and asses, who began to strike each other, and the whole earth shook on account of them. And when I looked in the vision, behold, one of those four angels who came forth, hurled from heaven, collected together, and took all the great stars, whose form partly resembles that of horses, and binding them all hand and foot, cast them into the cavities of the earth. 
chapter 89. Then one of those four went to the white cows and taught them a mystery. While the cow was trembling, it was born and became a man and fabricated for himself a large ship. In this he dwelt, and three cows dwelt with him in that ship, which covered them. Again I lifted up my eyes towards heaven and saw a lofty roof. Above it were seven cataracts, which poured forth on a certain village much water. Again I looked, and behold there were fountains open on the earth at that large village. The water began to boil up, and rose over the earth, so that the village was not seen, while its whole soil was covered with water. Much water was over it, darkness and clouds. Then I surveyed the height of this water, and it was elevated above the village. It flowed over the village and stood higher than the earth. Then all the cows which were collected there, while I looked on them, were drowned, swallowed up, and destroyed in the water. But the ship floated above it. All the cows, the elephants, the camels, and the asses were drowned on the earth, and all cattle. Nor could I perceive them. Neither were they able to get out, but perished and sunk into the deep. Again I looked in the vision until those cataracts from that lofty roof were removed, and the fountains of the earth became equalized, while other depths were opened, into which the water began to descend until the dry ground appeared. The ship remained on the earth, the darkness receded, and it became light. Then the white cow, which became a man, went out of the ship, and the three cows with him. One of the three cows was white, resembling that cow. One of them was red as blood, and one of them was black, and the white cow left them. Then began wild beasts and birds to bring forth. Of all these, the different kinds assembled together, lions, tigers, wolves, dogs, wild boars, foxes, rabbits, and the hansar, the siset, the avist, kites, fonkas, and ravens. Then the white cow was born in the midst of them, and they began to bite each other. When the white cow, which was born in the midst of them, brought forth a wild ass, and a white cow at the same time, and many wild asses. Then the white cow, which was born, brought forth a black wild sow, and a white sheep. That wild sow also brought forth many swine, and that sheep brought forth twelve sheep. When those twelve sheep grew up, they delivered one of them to the asses. Again those asses delivered that sheep to the wolves, and he grew up in the midst of them. Then Yahuwah brought the eleven sheep, that they might dwell and feed with him in the midst of the wolves. They multiplied, and there was abundance of pasture for them. But the wolves began to frighten and oppress them, while they destroyed their young ones. And they left their young in torrents of deep water. Now the sheep began to cry out on account of their young, and fled for refuge to their Adonai. One, however, which was saved, escaped and went away to the wild asses. I beheld the sheep moaning, crying, and petitioning their Adonai. While all their might, until Yahuwah of the sheep descended at their voice from lofty habitation, went to them and inspected them. He called to that sheep which had secretly stolen away from the wolves, and told him to make the wolves understand that they were not to touch the sheep. Then that sheep went to the wolves with a word of Yahuwah, when another met him and proceeded with him. Both of them together entered the dwelling of the wolves, and conversing with them made them understand that henceforward they were not to touch the sheep. Afterwards I perceived the wolves greatly prevailing over the sheep with their whole force. The sheep cried out, and their Adonai came to them. He began to strike the wolves, who commenced a grievous lamentation. But the sheep were silent, nor from that time did they cry out. I then looked at them, until they departed from the wolves. The eyes of the wolves were blind, who went out and followed them with all their might. But Yahuwah of the sheep proceeded with them, and conducted them. All his sheep followed him. His countenance terrific and splendid, and glorious was his aspect. Yet the wolves began to follow the sheep, until they overtook them in a certain lake of water. Then that lake became divided the water standing up on both sides before their face. And while their Adonai was conducting them, he placed himself between them and the wolves. The wolves, however, perceived not the sheep, but went into the midst of the lake, following them, 
and running after them into the lake of water. But when they saw Yahuwah of the sheep, they turned to fly from before his face. Then the water of the lake returned, and that suddenly, according to its nature. It became full and was raised up, until it covered the wolves. And I saw that all of them which had followed the sheep perished and were drowned. But the sheep passed over this water, proceeding to a wilderness which was without both water and grass. And they began to open their eyes and to see. Then I beheld Yahuwah of the sheep inspecting them, and giving them water and grass. The sheep was proceeding and conducting them. And when he had ascended the top of the lofty rock, Yahuwah of the sheep sent him to them. Afterwards I perceived their Adonai standing before them, with an aspect terrific and severe. And when they all beheld him, they were frightened at his countenance. All of them were alarmed and trembled. They cried out after that sheep, and to the other sheep who had been with him, and who was in the midst of them, saying, We are not able to stand before our Adonai, or to look upon him. Then that sheep who conducted them went away, and ascended the top of the rock. When the sheep began to grow blind, and to wander from the path which he had shown them, but he knew it not. Their Adonai, however, was moved with great indignation against them, and when that sheep had learned, he descended from the top of the rock, and coming to them, found that there were many which had become blind, and had wandered from his path. As soon as they beheld him, they feared and trembled at his presence, and became desirous of returning to their fold. Then that sheep, taking with him other sheep, went to those which had wandered, and afterwards began to kill them. They were terrified at his countenance. Then he caused those which had wandered to return, who went back to their fold. I likewise saw there in the vision that this sheep became a man, built a house for Yahuwah of the sheep, and made them all stand in the house. I perceived also that the sheep which proceeded to meet this sheep, their conductor, died. I saw, too, that all the great sheep perished, while smaller ones rose up in their place, entered into a pasture, and approached a river of water. Then that sheep, their conductor, who became a man, was separated from them and died. All the sheep sought after him, and cried for him with bitter lamentation. I saw likewise that they ceased to cry after that sheep, and passed over the river of water, and that there arose other sheep, all of whom conducted them, instead of those who were dead, and who had conducted them. Then I saw that the sheep entered into a goodly place, and a territory delectable and glorious. I saw also that they became satiated, that their house was in the midst of a delectable territory, and that sometimes their eyes were opened, and that sometimes they were blind, until another sheep arose and conducted them. He brought them all back, and their eyes were opened. Then dogs, foxes, and wild boars began to devour them, until another sheep arose, the master of the flock, one of themselves, a ram, to conduct them. This ram began to butt on every side those dogs, foxes, and wild boars, until they all perished. With his eyes he saw the ram in the midst of them, who had laid aside his glory. And he began to strike the sheep, treading upon them, and behaving himself without dignity. Then their Adonai sent a sheep to a still different sheep, and raised him up to be a ram, and to conduct them instead of that sheep who had laid aside his glory. Going therefore to him, and conversing with him alone, he raised up that ram, and made him a prince and leader of the flock. All the time that the dogs troubled the sheep, the first ram paid respect to this latter ram. Then the latter ram arose and fled away from before his face, and I saw that those dogs caused the first ram to fall. But the latter ram arose and conducted the smaller sheep. That ram likewise begat many sheep and died. Then there was a smaller sheep, a ram, instead of him, which became a prince and leader, conducting the flock. And the sheep increased in size and multiplied. And all the dogs, foxes, and wild boars feared and fled away from him. That ram also struck and killed all the wild beasts, so that they could not again prevail in the midst of the sheep, nor at any time ever snatch them away. And that house was made large and wide, a lofty tower being built upon it by the sheep, for Yahuwah of the sheep. 
The house was low, but the tower was elevated and very high. Then Yahuwah of the sheep stood upon that tower and caused a full table to approach before him. Again I saw that those sheep wandered and went various ways, forsaking that their house, and that their Adonai called to some among them, whom he sent to them. But these the sheep began to kill, and when one of them was saved from slaughter he leapt and cried out against those who were desirous of killing him. But Yahuwah of the sheep delivered him from their hands and made him ascend to him and remain with him. He sent also many others to them, to testify, and with lamentations, to exclaim against them. Again I saw, when some of them forsook the house of their Adonai, and his tower, wandering on all sides, and growing blind, I saw that Yahuwah of the sheep made a great slaughter among them in their pasture, until they cried out to him in consequence of that slaughter. Then he departed from the place, and left them in the power of lions, tigers, wolves, and the hyenas, and in the power of foxes, and of every beast. And the wild beasts began to tear them. I saw, too, that he forsook the house of their fathers, and their tower, giving them all into the power of lions to tear and devour them, into the power of every beast. And I began to cry out with all my might, imploring Yahuwah of the sheep, and showing him how the sheep were devoured by all the beasts of prey. But he looked on in silence, rejoicing that they were devoured, swallowed up, and carried off, and leaving them in the power of every beast for food. He called also seventy shepherds, and resigned to them the sheep, that they might overlook them, saying to them and to their associates, Every one of you henceforward overlook the sheep, and whatsoever I command you, do, and I will deliver them to you numbered. I will tell you which of them shall be slain, these destroy." And he delivered the sheep to them. Then he called to another and said, Understand and watch everything which the shepherd shall do to these sheep, for many more of them shall perish than I have commanded. Of every excess and slaughter which the shepherds shall commit, there shall be an account, as how many may have perished by my command, and how many they may have destroyed of their own heads. Of all the destruction by each of the shepherds there shall be an account, and according to the number I will cause a recital to be made before me, how many they have destroyed of their own heads, and how many they have delivered up to destruction, that I may have this testimony against them, that I may know all their proceedings, and that, delivering to them, I may see what they will do, whether they will act as I have commanded them or not. However, they shall be ignorant, neither shall you make any explanation to them, neither shall you reprove them, where there shall be an account of all the destruction done by them in the respective seasons. Then they began to kill and destroy more than it was commanded them. And they left the sheep in the power of the lions, so that very many of them were devoured and swallowed up by lions and tigers, and wild boars preyed upon them. That tower they burnt and overthrew that house. Then I grieved extremely on account of the tower, and because the house of the sheep was overthrown. Neither was I afterwards able to perceive whether they again entered that house. The shepherds likewise, and their associates, delivered them to all the wild beasts, that they might devour them. Each of them in his season, according to his number, was delivered up. Each of them, one with another, was described in a sephir. How many of them, one with another, were destroyed in a sephir? More, however, than was ordered, everyone killed and destroyed. Then I began to weep, and was greatly indignant on account of the sheep. In like manner also I saw in the vision him who wrote, how he wrote down one, destroyed by the shepherds, every day. He ascended, remained, and exhibited each of his sepharim to Yahuwah of the sheep, all which they had done, and all which each of them had made away with, and all which they had delivered up to destruction. He took the sephir up in his hands, read it, sealed it, and deposited it. After this I saw shepherds overlooking for twelve hours. And behold, three of the sheep departed, arrived, went in, and began building all which was fallen down of that house. But the wild boars hindered them, although they prevailed not. Again they began to build as before, and raised up that tower, which was called a lofty tower. And again they began to place before the tower a table, 
with every impure and unclean kind of bread upon it. Moreover, also all the sheep were blind and could not see, as were the shepherds likewise. Thus were they delivered up to the shepherds for a great destruction, who trod them underfoot and devoured them. Yet was their Adonai silent, until all the sheep in the field were destroyed. The shepherds and the sheep were all mixed together, but they did not save them from the power of the beasts. Then he who wrote the Sefer ascended, exhibited it, and read it at the residence of Yahuwah of the sheep. He petitioned him for them, and prayed, pointing out every act of the shepherds, and testifying before him against them all. Then taking the Sefer, he deposited it with him, and departed. Chapter 90 And I observed during the time that thus thirty-seven shepherds were overlooking, all of whom finished in their respective periods as the first. Others then received them into their hands, that they might overlook them in their respective periods, every shepherd in his own period. Afterwards I saw in the vision that all the birds of heaven arrived, eagles, the avist, kites, and ravens. The eagle instructed them all. They began to devour the sheep, to peck out their eyes, and to eat up their bodies. The sheep then cried out, for their bodies were devoured by the birds. I also cried out, and groaned in my sleep against the shepherd which overlooked the flock. And I looked, while the sheep were eaten up by the dogs, by the eagles, and by the kites. They neither left them their body, nor their skin, nor their muscles, until their bones alone remained, until their bones fell upon the ground, and then the sheep became diminished. I observed likewise during the time that twenty-three shepherds were overlooking, who completed in their respective periods fifty-eight periods. Then were small lambs born of those white sheep, who began to open their eyes and to see, crying out to the sheep. The sheep, however, cried not out to them, neither did they hear what they uttered to them, but were deaf, blind, and obdurate in the greatest degrees. I saw in the vision that ravens flew down upon those lambs, that they seized one of them, and that tearing the sheep in pieces, they devoured them. I saw also that the horns grew upon those lambs, and that the ravens lighted down upon their horns. I saw too that a large horn sprouted out on an animal among the sheep, and that their eyes were opened. He looked at them. Their eyes were wide open, and he cried out to them. Then the Dabala saw him, all of whom ran to him. And besides this, all the eagles, the avist, the ravens, and the kites were still carrying off the sheep, flying down upon them, and devouring them. The sheep were silent, but the Dabala lamented and cried out. Then the ravens contended and struggled with them. They wished among them to break his horn, but they prevailed not over him. I looked on them, until the shepherds, the eagles, the avis, and the kites came, who cried out to the ravens to break the horn of the Dabla, to contend with him, and to kill him. But he struggled with them, and cried out that help might come to him. Then I perceived that the man came who had written down the names of the shepherds, and who ascended up before Yahuwah of the sheep. He brought assistance, and caused everyone to see him descending to the help of the Dabla. I perceived likewise that Yahuwah of the sheep came to them in wrath, while all those who saw him fled away. All fell down in his tabernacle before his face, while all the eagles, the avist, ravens, and kites assembled, and brought with them all the sheep of the field. All came together and strove to break the horn of the Dabala. Then I saw that the man, who wrote the sefer at the word of Yahuwah, opened the sefer of destruction, of that destruction which the last twelve shepherds wrought, and pointed out before Yahu of the sheep that they destroyed more than those who preceded them. I saw also that Yahuwah of the sheep came to them, and taking in his hand the scepter of his wrath seized the earth, which became rent asunder, while all the beasts and birds of heaven fell from the sheep and sunk into the earth, which closed over them. I saw too that a large sword was given to the sheep, who went forth against all the beasts of the field to slay them. But all the beasts and birds of heaven fled away from before their face, and I saw a throne erected in a delectable land. Upon this sat Yahuwah of the sheep, who received all the sealed sephirim, which were opened before him. 
Then Yahuwah called the first seven white ones, and commanded them to bring before him the first of the first stars, which preceded the stars whose form partly resembled that of horses. The first star which fell down first, and they brought them all before him. And he spoke to the man who rode in his presence, who was one of the seven white ones, saying, Take those seventy shepherds, to whom I delivered up the sheep, and receiving them, killed more of them than I commanded. Behold, I saw them all bound, and standing before him. First came on the trial of the stars, which, being judged and found guilty, went to the place of punishment. They thrust them into the deep, full of flaming fire, and full of pillars of fire. Then the seventy shepherds were judged, and being found guilty, were thrust into the flaming abyss. At that time likewise I perceived that one abyss was thus opened in the midst of the earth, which was full of fire. And to this were brought the blind sheep, which being judged and found guilty, were all thrust into that abyss of fire on the earth, and burnt. The abyss was on the right of that house. And I saw the sheep burning, and their bones consuming. I stood beholding him emerge that ancient house, while they brought out its pillars, every plant in it, and the ivory enfolding it. They brought it out and deposited it in a place on the right side of the earth. I also saw that Yahuwah of the sheep produced a new house, great and loftier than the former, which he bound by the former circular spot. All its pillars were new and its ivory new, as well as more abundant than the former ancient, which he had brought out. And while all the sheep which were left were in the midst of it, all the beasts of the earth and all the birds of heaven fell down and worshipped them, petitioning them, and obeying them in everything. Then those three who were clothed in white, and who, holding me by my hand, had before caused me to ascend, while the hand of him who spoke held me, raised me up, and placed me in the midst of the sheep, before the judgment took place. The sheep were all white, with wool long and pure. Then all who had perished, and had been destroyed, every beast of the field and every bird of heaven, assembled in that house, while Yahuwah of the sheep rejoiced with great joy, because all were good, and had come back again to his dwelling. And I saw that they laid down the sword which had been given to the sheep, and returned it to his house, sealing it up in the presence of Yahuwah. All the sheep would have been enclosed in that house, had it been capable of containing them, and the eyes of all were open, gazing on the good one. Nor was there one among them who did not behold him. I likewise perceived that the house was large, wide, and extremely full. I saw, too, that a white cow was born, whose horns were great, and that all the beasts of the field and all the birds of heaven were alarmed at him and entreated him at all times. Then I saw that the nature of all of them was changed, and that they became white cows, and that the first in the midst of them spoke, when that word was a wild ox. Upon the head of that wild ox were great and black horns. While Yahuwah of the sheep rejoiced over them, and over all the cows. I lay down in the midst of them. I awoke, and saw the whole. This is the vision which I saw, lying down and waking. Then I blessed Yahuwah of righteousness, and gave glory to him. Afterwards I wept abundantly, nor did my tears cease, so that I became incapable of enduring it. While I was looking on, they flowed on account of what I saw. For all was come and gone by. Every individual circumstance respecting the conduct of mankind was seen by me. In that night I remembered my former dream, and therefore wept and was troubled, because I had seen that vision. Chapter 91 And now, my son Methuselah, call to me all your brethren, and assemble for me all the children of your mother, for a voice calls me, and the Ruach is poured out upon me, that I may show you everything which shall happen to you forever. Then Methuselah went, called to him all his brethren, and assembled his kindred. And conversing with all his children in truth, said, Hear, my children, every word of your father, and listen in uprightness to the voice of my mouth, for I would gain your attention while I address you. My beloved, be attached to integrity, and walk in it. Approach not integrity with a double heart, nor be associated with double-minded men, but walk, my children, in righteousness, which will conduct you in good paths, 
and let truth be your companion. For I know that oppression will exist and prevail on earth, that on earth great punishment shall in the end take place, and that there shall be a consummation of all iniquity, which shall be cut off from its root, and every fabric shall pass away. Iniquity, however, shall again be renewed and consummated on earth. Every act of crime and every act of oppression and impiety shall be a second time embraced. When therefore iniquity, sin, blasphemy, tyranny, and every work shall increase, and transgression, impiety, and uncleanness also shall increase, upon them all shall great punishment be inflicted from heaven. The holy Yahuwah shall go forth in wrath, and upon them all shall great punishment from heaven be inflicted. The holy Yahuwah shall go forth in wrath, and with punishment, that he may execute judgment upon earth. In those days oppression shall be cut off from its roots, and iniquity with fraud shall be eradicated, perishing from under heaven. All the idols of the nations shall be surrendered with its inhabitants, with fire shall it be burnt. They shall be brought from every part of the earth, and be cast into a judgment of fire. They shall perish in wrath, and by a judgment overpowering them forever. Righteousness shall be raised up from slumber, and wisdom shall be raised up, and conferred upon them. Then shall the roots of iniquity be cut off. Sinners perish by the sword, and blasphemers be annihilated everywhere. Those who mediate oppression, and those who blaspheme by the sword shall perish. And now, my children, I will describe and point out to you the path of righteousness and the path of oppression. I will again point them out to you, that you may know what is to come. Hear now, my children, and walk in the path of righteousness, but shun that of oppression, for all who walk in the path of iniquity shall perish forever. Chapter 92 That which was written by Hanach. He wrote all this instruction of wisdom for every man of dignity and every judge of the earth, for all my children who shall dwell upon earth, and for subsequent generations, conducting themselves uprightly and peaceably. Let not your Ruach be grieved on account of the times, for the Holy, the Great One, has prescribed a period to all. Let the righteous man arise from slumber. Let him arise and proceed in the path of righteousness, in all its paths, and let him advance in goodness and eternal clemency. Mercy shall be showed to the righteous man, and upon him shall be conferred integrity and power forever. In goodness and in righteousness shall he exist, and shall walk in everlasting light. But sin shall perish in eternal darkness, nor be seen from that time forward forevermore. Chapter 93 After this, Hanach began to speak from a sephir, and Hanach said, Concerning the children of righteousness, concerning the elect of the world, and concerning the plant of righteousness and integrity. These things will I speak of, and will I explain to you, my children. I am Hanach. In consequence of that which has been shown to me, from my heavenly vision and from the voice of the watchers and holy ones, have I acquired knowledge, and from the tablet of heaven have I acquired understanding. Hanach then began to speak from a sephir, and said, I have been born the seventh and the first week, while judgment and righteousness wait with patience. But after me, in the second week, great wickedness shall arise, and fraud shall spring forth. In that week the end of the first shall take place, in which man will be saved. But when it is completed, iniquity shall grow up, and he shall execute the decree upon sinners. Afterwards, in the third week, during its completion, a man of the plant of righteous judgment shall be selected, and after him the plant of righteousness shall come forever. Subsequently, in the fourth week, during its completion, the visions of the holy and the righteous shall be seen, the order of generation after generation, and a habitation shall be made for them. Then in the fifth week, during its completion, the house of glory and of dominion shall be erected forever. After that, in the sixth week, all those who are in it shall be darkened, the hearts of all of them shall be forgetful of wisdom, and in it shall a man arise and come forth. And during its completion he shall burn the house of dominion with fire, and all the rice of the elect root shall be dispersed. Afterwards, in the seventh week, a perverse generation shall arise, 
abundant shall be its deeds, and all its deeds perverse. During its completion, the righteous shall be selected from the everlasting plant of righteousness, and to them shall be given the sevenfold doctrine of his whole creation. Afterwards there shall be another week, the eighth of righteousness, to which shall be given a sword to execute judgment and justice upon all oppressors. Sinners shall be delivered up into the hands of the righteous, who during its completion shall acquire habitations by their righteousness, and the house of the great king shall be established for celebrations forever. After this, in the ninth week, shall the judgment of righteousness be revealed to the whole world. Every work of the wicked shall disappear from the whole earth. The world shall be marked for destruction, and all men shall be on the watch for the path of integrity. And after this, on the seventh day of the tenth week, there shall be an everlasting judgment, which shall be executed upon the watchers, and a spacious eternal heaven shall spring forth in the midst of the angels. The former heaven shall depart and pass away, a renewed heaven shall appear, and all the celestial powers shine with sevenfold splendor forever. Afterwards, likewise, shall there be many weeks, which shall externally exist in goodness and in righteousness. Neither shall sin be named there forever and ever. Who is there of all the children of men, capable of hearing the voice of the Holy One without emotion? Who is there capable of thinking his thoughts? Who is capable of contemplating all the workmanship of heaven? Who of comprehending the deeds of heaven? He may behold its animation, but not its ruach. He may be capable of conversing, but not of ascending. He may see all the boundaries of these things and meditate upon them, but he can make nothing like them. Who of all men is able to understand the breadth and length of the earth? By whom have been seen the dimensions of all these things? Is it every man who is capable of comprehending the extent of heaven, what its elevation is, and by what it is supported? How many are the numbers of the stars, and where all the luminaries remain at rest? Chapter 94 And now let me exhort you, my children, to love righteousness and to walk in it, for the cycles of righteousness are worthy of exception. But the paths of iniquity shall suddenly fail and be diminished. To men of note, in their generation the paths of oppression and death are revealed, but they keep far from them and do not follow them. Now, too, let me exhort you, righteous, not to walk in the paths of evil and oppression, nor in the paths of death. Approach them not, that you may not perish, but covet, and choose for yourselves righteousness and a good life. Walk in the paths of peace, that you may live and be found worthy. Retain my words in your inmost thoughts, and obliterate them not from your hearts, for I know that sinners counsel men to commit crime craftily. They are not found in every place, nor does every counsel possess a little of them. Woe to those who build iniquity and oppression, and who lay the foundation of fraud, for suddenly shall they be subverted and never obtain peace. Woe to those who build up their houses with crime, for from their very foundations shall their houses be demolished, and by the sword shall they fall. Those, too, who acquire gold and silver shall justly and suddenly perish. Woe to you who are rich, for in your riches have you trusted, but from your riches you shall be removed, because you have not remembered El Elyon in the days of your prosperity. You have committed blasphemy and iniquity, and are destined to the day of the effusion of blood, to the day of darkness, and to the day of the great judgment. This I will declare and point out to you, that he who created you will destroy you. When you fall, he will not show you mercy, but your Creator will rejoice in your destruction. Let those then, who shall be righteous among you in those days, detest sinners and the wicked. Chapter 95 Oh, that my eyes were clouds of water, that I might weep over you, and pour forth my tears like rain, and rest from the sorrow of my heart. Who has permitted you to hate and to transgress? Judgment shall overtake you, you sinners. The righteous shall not fear the wicked, because Elohim will again bring them into your power, that you may avenge yourselves of them according to your pleasure. Woe to you who shall be so bound by execrations, 
that you cannot be released from them, the remedy being far removed from you on account of your sins. Woe to you who recompense your neighbor with evil, for you shall be recompensed according to your works. Woe to you, false witnesses, you who aggravate iniquity, for you shall suddenly perish. Woe to you, sinners, for you reject the righteous, for you receive or reject those who do iniquity, and their yoke shall prevail over you. Chapter 96 Wait in hope, you righteous, for suddenly shall sinners perish from before you, and you shall exercise dominion over them according to your will. In the day of the sufferings of sinners, your offspring shall be elevated and lifted up like eagles. Your nest shall be more exalted than that of the abyss. You shall ascend and enter into the cavities of the earth and into the clefts of the rocks forever, like conies, from the sight of the wicked, who shall groan over you and weep like sirens. You shall not fear those who trouble you, for restoration shall be yours. A splendid light shall shine around you, and the voice of tranquility shall be heard from heaven. Woe to you, sinners, for your wealth makes you resemble Chodeshim, but your hearts reproach you, that you are sinners. This word shall testify against you for the remembrance of crime. Woe to you who feed upon the glory of the grain, and drink the strength of the deepest spring, and in your power tread down the humble. Woe to you who drink water at pleasure, for suddenly shall you be recompensed, consumed, and withered, because you have forsaken the foundation of life. Woe to you who act iniquitously, fraudulently, and blasphemously. There shall be a remembrance against you for evil. Woe to you, powerful, who with power strike down righteousness, for the day of your destruction shall come. At that very time, many and good days shall be the portion of the righteous at the period of your judgment. Chapter 97 the righteous are confident that sinners will be disgraced and perish in the day of iniquity. You shall yourselves be conscious of it, for El Elyon will remember your destruction, and the angels shall rejoice over it. What will you do, sinners? And where will you fly in the day of judgment, when you shall hear the words of the prayer of the righteous? You are not like them who in this respect witness against you. You are associates of sinners. In those days shall the prayers of the righteous come up before Yahuwah, when the day of your judgment shall arrive, and every circumstance of your iniquity be related before the Great and the Holy One. Your faces shall be covered with shame, while every deed, strengthened by crime, shall be rejected. Woe unto you, sinners, who in the midst of the sea and on the dry land are those against whom an evil record exists. Woe to you who squander silver and gold, not obtained in righteousness, and say, We are rich possess wealth, and have acquired everything which we can desire. Now then will we do whatsoever we are disposed to do, for we have amassed silver, our barns are full, and the husbandmen of our families are like overflowing water. Like water shall your falsehood pass away, for your wealth will not be permanent, but shall suddenly ascend from you, because you have obtained it all iniquitously. To extreme malediction shall you be delivered up. And now I swear to you, crafty, as well as simple ones, that you, often contemplating the earth, you men, clothe yourselves more elegantly than married women, and boat together more so than a woman and more colored than a girl, everywhere in majesty, in magnificence, in authority, and in silver. But gold, purple, honor, and wealth, like water, flow away. Erudition, therefore, and wisdom are not theirs, Thus shall they perish, together with their riches, with all their glory, and with their honors. While with disgrace, with slaughter, and an extreme penury, shall their ruachot be thrust into a furnace of fire. I have sworn to you, sinners, that neither mountain nor hill has been or shall be subservient to woman. Neither in this way has crime been sent down to us upon earth, but men of their own heads have invented it, and greatly shall those who give it efficiency be execrated. Barrenness shall not be previously inflicted on woman, but on account of the work of her hands shall she die childless. I have sworn to you, sinners, by the Holy and the Great One, 
that all your evil deeds are disclosed in the heavens, and that none of your oppressive acts are concealed in secret. Think not in your minds, neither say in your hearts, that every crime is not manifested and seen. In heaven it is daily written down before El Elyon. Henceforward shall it be manifested, for every act of oppression which you commit shall be daily recorded until the period of your condemnation. Woe to you, simple ones, for you shall perish in your simplicity. To the wise you will not listen, and that which is good you shall not obtain. Now therefore know that you are destined to the day of destruction, nor hope that sinners shall live, but in process of time you shall die, for you are not marked for redemption, but are destined to the great day of judgment, to the day of distress, and the extreme ignominy of your souls. Woe to you, obdurate in heart, who commit crime and feed on blood. Whence do you feed on good things, drink, and are satiated? Is it not because our Adonai, El Elyon, has abundantly supplied every good thing upon earth? To you there shall not be peace. Woe to you who love the deeds of iniquity. Why do you hope for that which is good? Know that you shall be given up into the hands of the righteous, who shall cut off your necks, slay you, and show you no compassion. Woe to you who rejoice in the trouble of the righteous, for a grave shall not be dug for you. Woe to you who frustrate the word of the righteous, for to you there shall be no hope of life. Woe to you who write down the word of falsehood and the word of the wicked, for their falsehood they record, that they may hear and not forget folly. To them there shall be no peace, but they shall surely die suddenly. Chapter 98 Woe to them who act impiously, who laud and honor the word of falsehood. You have been lost in perdition and have never led a virtuous life. Woe to you who change the words of integrity. They transgress against the eternal Torah. And cause the heads of those who are not sinners to be trodden down upon the earth. In those days you, O righteous, shall have been deemed worthy of having your prayers rise up in remembrance, and shall have deposited them in testimony before the angels, that they might record the sins of the sinners in the presence of El Elyon. In those days the nations shall be overthrown, but the families of the nations shall rise again in the day of perdition. In those days they who become pregnant shall go forth, carry off their children, and forsake them. Their offspring shall slip from them, and while suckling them shall they forsake them. They shall never return to them, and never instruct their beloved. Again I swear to you, sinners, that crime has been prepared for the day of blood, which never ceases. They shall worship stones and engrave gold, silver and wooden images. They shall worship impure ruachot, devils and every idol, and temples. But no help shall be attained for them. Their hearts shall become impious through their folly, and their eyes be blinded with the fear of their hearts. In their visionary dreams shall they be impious and superstitious, lying in all their actions and worshipping a stone. Altogether shall they perish. But in those days blessed shall they be, to whom the word of wisdom is delivered, who point out and pursue the path of El Elyon, who walk in the way of righteousness, and who act not impiously with the impious. They shall be saved. Woe to you who expand the crime of your neighbor, for in Sheol shall you be slain. Woe to you who lay the foundation of sin and deceit, and who are bitter on earth, for on it shall you be consumed. Woe to you who build your houses by the labor of others, every part of which is constructed with brick and with the stone of crime. I tell you that you shall not obtain peace. Woe to you who despise the extent of the everlasting inheritance of your fathers, while your souls follow after idols, for to you there shall be no tranquility. Woe to them who commit iniquity and give aid to blasphemy, who slay their neighbor until the day of the great judgment, for your glory shall fall, malevolence shall be put into your hearts, and the Ruach of his wrath shall stir you up, that every one of you may perish by the sword. Then shall all the righteous and the holy remember your crimes. Chapter 99 In those days shall fathers be struck down with their children in the presence of each other, and brethren with their brethren shall fall dead, until a river shall flow from their blood. For a man shall not restrain his hand from his children, nor from his children's children, 
his mercy will be to kill them. Nor shall the sinner restrain his hand from his honored brother. From the dawn of day to the setting sun shall the slaughter continue. The horse shall wade up to his breast, and the chariot shall sink to its axle in the blood of sinners. Chapter 100 In those days the angels shall descend into places of concealment, and gather together in one spot all that have assisted in crime. In that day shall El Elyon rise up to execute the great judgment upon all sinners, and to commit the guardianship of all the righteous and holy to the holy angels, that they may protect them as the apple of an eye, until every evil and every crime be annihilated. Whether or not the righteous sleep securely, wise men shall then truly perceive. And the sons of the earth shall understand every word of that sephir, knowing that their riches cannot save them in the ruin of their crimes. Woe to you, sinners, when you shall be afflicted on account of the righteous in the day of the great trouble, shall be burnt in the fire, and be recompensed according to your deeds. Woe to you, perverted in heart, who are watchful to obtain an accurate knowledge of evil and to discover terrors. No one shall assist you. Woe to you, sinners, for the words of your mouths and with the work of your hands have you acted impiously. In the flame of a blazing fire shall you be burnt. And now know that the angels shall inquire into your conduct in heaven, of the sun, the moon, and the stars, respecting your sins, for upon earth you exercise jurisdiction over the righteous. Every cloud shall bear witness against you, the snow, the dew, and the rain, for all of them shall be withheld from you, that they may not descend upon you, nor become subservient to your crimes. Now then, bring gifts of salutation to the rain, that, not being withheld, it may descend upon you, and to the dew, if it has received from you gold and silver. But when the frost, snow, cold, every snowy wind, and every suffering belonging to them fall upon you, in those days you will be utterly incapable of standing before them. Chapter 101 Attentively consider heaven, all you progeny of heaven, and all the works of El Elyon, fear him, nor conduct yourselves criminally before him. If he shut up the windows of heaven, restraining the rain and dew, that it may not descend upon the earth on your account, what will you do? And if he send his wrath upon you, and upon all your deeds, you are not they who can supplicate him, you who utter against his righteousness, language proud and powerful, to you there shall be no peace. Do you not see the commanders of ships, how their vessels are tossed about by the waves, torn to pieces by the winds, and exposed to the greatest peril? That they therefore fear, because their whole property is embarked with them on the ocean, and that they forebode evil in their hearts, because it may swallow them up, and they may perish in it? Is not the whole sea, all its waters, and all its commotion, the work of him, El Elyon, of him who has sealed up all its exertions, and girded it on every side with sand? At his rebuke, dried up and alarmed, while all its fish, with everything in it, die? And will not you sinners, who are on earth, fear him? Is not he the maker of heaven and earth, and of all things which are in them? And who has given erudition and wisdom to all that move upon the earth and over the sea? Are not the commanders of ships terrified at the ocean? And shall not sinners be terrified at El Elyon? Chapter 102 In those days, when he shall cast the calamity of fire upon you, whither will you fly, and where will you be safe? And when he sends forth his word against you, are you not spared and terrified? All the luminaries are agitated with fear, and all the earth is spared, while it trembles and suffers anxiety. All the angels fulfill the commands received by them, and are desirous of being concealed from the presence of the great glory, while the children of the earth are alarmed and troubled. But you, sinners, are forever accursed. To you there shall be no peace. Fear not, souls of the righteous, but wait with patient hope for the day of your death in righteousness. Grieve not, because your souls descend in great trouble, with groaning, lamentation, and sorrow to the receptacle of the dead. In your lifetime your bodies have not received a recompense in proportion to your goodness, but in the period of your existence have sinners existed, in the period of execration and of punishment. And when you die, sinners say concerning you, 
As we die, the righteous die. What profit have they in their works? Behold, like us, they expire in sorrow and in darkness. What advantage have they over us? Henceforward are we equal. What will be within their grasp? And what before their eyes forever? For behold, they are dead, and never will they again perceive the light. I say unto you, sinners, you have been satisfied with meat and drink, with the plunder of men and rapine, with sin, with the acquisition of wealth, and with the sight of good days. Have you not marked the righteous, how their end is in peace? For no oppression is found in them even to the day of their death. They perish, and are as if they were not, while their souls descend in trouble to the receptacle of the dead. Chapter 103 but now I swear to you, righteous, by the greatness of his splendor and his glory, by his illustrious kingdom and by his majesty, to you I swear that I comprehend this mystery, that I have read the tablet of heaven, have seen the writing of the holy ones, and have discovered what is written and impressed on it concerning you, that all goodness, joy, and glory has been prepared for you and been written down for the ruachot of them who die eminently righteous and good. To you it shall be given, in return for your troubles, and your portion shall far exceed the portion of the living. The Ruachot of you who die in righteousness shall exist and rejoice. Their Ruachot shall exult, and their remembrance shall be before the face of El Elohim from generation to generation. Nor shall they now fear disgrace. Woe to you, sinners, when you die in your sins, and they who are like you say, respecting you, Blessed are these sinners. They have lived out their whole period, and now they die in happiness and in wealth. Distress and slaughter they knew not while alive. In honor they die. Nor ever in their lifetime did judgment overtake them. Has it not been shown to them that, to the receptacle of the dead, their souls shall be made to descend, their evil deeds shall become their greatest torment? Into darkness, into the snare, and into the flame, which shall burn to the great judgment shall the Ruachot enter, and the great judgment shall take effect forever and ever. Woe to you, for to you there shall be no peace. Neither can you say to the righteous and to the good who are alive, In the days of our trouble have we been afflicted. Every trouble have we seen, and many evil things have suffered. Our Ruachot have been consumed, lessened, and diminished. We have perished nor has there been a possibility of help for us in word or in deed. We have found none, but have been tormented and destroyed. We have not expected to live day after day. We hoped indeed to have been the head, but we have become the tail. We have been afflicted when we have exerted ourselves, but we have been devoured by sinners and the wicked. Their yoke has been heavy upon us. Those have exercised dominion over us, who detest and who goad us, and to those who hate us have we humbled our neck, but they have shown no compassion towards us. We have been desirous of escaping from them, that we might fly away and be at rest, but we have found no place to which we could fly, and be secure from them. We have sought an asylum with princes in our distress, and have cried out to those who were devouring us, but our cry has not been regarded nor have they been disposed to hear our voice, but rather to assist those who plunder and devour us, those who diminish us and hide their oppression, who remove not their yoke from us, but devour, enervate, enslave us, who conceal our slaughter, nor remember that they have lifted up their hands against us. Chapter 104 I swear to you, righteous, that in heaven the angels record your goodness before the glory of El Elohim. Wait with patient hope, for formerly you have been disgraced with evil and with affliction, but now shall you shine like the luminaries of heaven. You shall be seen, and the gates of heaven shall be opened to you. Your cries have cried for judgment, and it has appeared to you, for an account of all your suffering shall be required from the princes and from everyone who has assisted your plunderers. Wait with patient hope, nor relinquish your confidence, for great joy shall be yours, like that of the angels in heaven. Conduct yourselves as you may, still you shall not be concealed in the day of the great judgment. You shall not be found like sinners, 
and eternal condemnation shall be far from you so long as the world exists. And now fear not, righteous, when you see sinners flourishing and prosperous in their ways. Be not associates with them, but keep yourselves at a distance from their oppression. Be you associated with the host of heaven. You, sinners, say, all our transgressions shall not be taken account of and be recorded, but all your transgressions shall be recorded daily. And be assured by me that light and darkness, day and night, behold all your transgressions. Be not impious in your thoughts. Lie not. Surrender not the word of uprightness. Lie not against the word of the holy and El Elohim. Glorify not your idols. For all your lying and all your impiety is not for righteousness, but for great crime. Now will I point out a mystery. Many sinners shall turn and transgress against the word of uprightness. They shall speak evil things. They shall utter falsehood and create a great creation and compose sepharim in their own words. But when they shall write all my words correctly in their own languages, they shall neither change or diminish them, but shall write them all correctly, all which from the first I have uttered concerning them. Another mystery also I point out. To the righteous and the wise shall be given sepharim of joy, of integrity, and of great wisdom. To them shall sepharim be given, in which they shall believe, and in which they shall rejoice, and all the righteous shall be rewarded, who from these shall acquire the knowledge of every upright path. In those days, says Yahuwah, they shall call to the children of the earth and make them listen to their wisdom. Show them that you are their leaders, and that remuneration shall take place over the whole earth, for I and my son will forever hold communion with them in the paths of uprightness, while they are still alive. Peace shall be yours. Rejoice, children of integrity, in the truth. Chapter 105 After a time, my son Methuselah took a woman for his son Lamech. She became pregnant by him and brought forth a child, the flesh of which was as white as snow and red as a rose, the hair of whose head was white like wool and long, and whose eyes were beautiful. When he opened them, he illuminated all the house, like the sun, the whole house abounded with light. And when he was taken from the hand of the midwife, Lamech, his father, became afraid of him, and flying away came to his own father Methuselah and said, I have begotten a son unlike others. He is not of men, but, resembling the offspring of the angels of heaven, is of a different nature, being altogether unlike to us. His eyes are as the rays of the sun, his countenance glorious, and he looks not as if he belonged to me, but to the angels. I am afraid lest something miraculous should take place on earth in his days. And now, my father, let me entreat and request you to go to our progenitor, Hanak, and learn from him the truth, for his residence is with the angels. When Methuselah heard the words of his son, he came to me at the extremities of the earth, for he had been informed that I was there, and he cried out. I heard his voice and went to him, saying, Behold, I am here, my son, since you have come to me. He answered and said, On account of a great event have I come to you, and on account of a sight difficult have I approached you. And now, my father, hear me, for to my son Lemek a child has been born, who resembles not him, and whose nature is not like the nature of man. His color is whiter than snow, he is redder than the rose, the hair of his head is whiter than white wool. His eyes are like the rays of the sun, and when he opened them, he illuminated the whole house. When also he was taken from the hand of the midwife, his father Lamech feared him, and fled to me, believing not what belonged to him, but that he resembled the angels of heaven. And behold, I am come to you, that you might point out to me the truth. Then I, Hanak, answered and said, Yahuwah will effect a new thing upon the earth. This have I explained and seen in a vision. I have shown you that in the generations of Yered, my father, those who were from heaven disregarded the word of Yahuwah. Behold, they committed crimes, laid aside their class, and intermingled with women. With them also they transgressed, married with them, and begat children, who are not like spiritual beings, but creatures of flesh. A great destruction, therefore, shall come upon all the earth, a deluge, a great destruction, shall take place in one year. 
This child which is born to your son shall survive on the earth, and his three sons shall be saved with him. When all mankind who are on the earth shall die, he shall be safe. And his posterity shall beget on the earth giants, not spiritual, but carnal. Upon the earth shall a great punishment be inflicted, and it shall be washed from all corruption. Now therefore inform your son Lamech that he who is born is his child in truth, and he shall call his name Noah, for he shall be to you a survivor. He and his children shall be saved from the corruption which shall take place in the world, from all the sin and from all the iniquity which shall be consummated on earth in his days. Afterwards shall great impiety take place than that which had been before consummated on the earth. For I am acquainted with holy mysteries, which Yahuwah himself has discovered and explained to me, and which I have read in the tablets of heaven. In them I saw it written that generation after generation shall transgress, until a righteous race shall arise, until transgression and crime perish from off the earth, until all goodness come upon it. And now, my son, go tell your son, Lamech, that the child which is born is his child in truth, and that there is no deception. When Methuselah heard the word of his father Hanach, who had shown him every secret thing, he returned with understanding and called the name of that child Noah, because he was to console the earth on account of all its destruction. Another sefer, which Hanach wrote for his son Methuselah, and for those who should come after him and guard their purity of conduct in the latter days. You, who have labored, shall wait in those days, until the evil doers be consumed, and the power of the guilty be annihilated. Wait until sin pass away. For their names shall be blotted out of the holy Sepharim, their seed shall be destroyed, and their ruach slain. They shall cry out and lament in the invisible waste, and in the bottomless fire shall they burn. There I perceived as it were a cloud which could not be seen through, for from the depth of it I was unable to look upwards. I beheld also a flame of fire blazing brightly, and as it were, glittering mountains whirled around, and agitated from side to side. Then I inquired of one of the holy angels who was with me and said, What is splendid? For it is not heaven, but a flame of fire alone which blazes, and the clamor of exclamation, of woe, and of great suffering. He said, There, into that place which you behold, shall be thrust the ruach of sinners and blasphemers, of those who shall do evil, and who shall pervert all which Elohim has spoken by the mouth of the prophets, all which they ought to do. For respecting these things, there shall be writings and impressions above in heaven, that the angels may read them and know what shall happen both to sinners and to the ruacho of the humble, to those who have suffered in their bodies, but have been rewarded by Elohim, who have been injuriously treated by wicked men, who have loved Elohim, who have been attached neither to gold nor to silver, nor to any good thing in the world, but have given their bodies to torment. To those who from the period of their birth have not been covetous of earthly riches, but have regarded themselves as a breath passing away, such has been their conduct, and much has Yahuwah tried them, and their ruachot have been found pure, that they might bless his name. All their blessings have I related in a sephir, and he has rewarded them, for they have been found to love heaven with an everlasting aspiration. While they have been trodden down by wicked men, they have heard from them revilings and blasphemies, and have been ignominiously treated, while they were blessing me. And now will I call the Ruachot of the good from the generation of light, and will change those who have been born in darkness, who have not in their bodies been recompensed with glory, as their belief may have merited. I will bring them into the splendid light of those who love my holy name, and I will place each of them on a throne of glory, of glory his own, and they shall be at rest during unnumbered periods. Righteous is the judgment of Elohim. For to the believing shall he give belief in the habitations of uprightness. They shall see those who have been born in darkness unto darkness shall be cast, while the righteous shall be at rest. Sinners shall cry out, beholding them, while they exist in splendor and proceed forwards to the days and periods prescribed to them.